um, with Learn to Trade. Wooden Spoon Survivors Club. What do you think? My, my, my I miss. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That right there is your girl, Adara. And I am Sharif, and we're going to wait for everyone to come on over from the other stream. We already have big Kyle Burdett. What's up, my man? We got Bears versus Bulls. We got Darwin doing uh, the disco dance there in the chat. Shout out to the OG Darwin, my man. Uh, let's see everybody else come on over. We already have the world's best production team. Hola, says the Chilean Nightmare. TGI. Oh, oh, Ram Ram. Uh, Why? Wow, you... you you can't, you know, exactly. That was the reason <laughs> because of your heritage. AV, JC Finance, TDOT, 420, Bud Monster, as well as JLo with Mateus Lane. We got Pedro Khan. We got NECA. We got Sixto V. We got Balba Nambi. We have a whole bunch of people. Charan, I see you, sir. Pita Panda, Adrian, Kevin, Mendoza. We got Dino. We got 509 Blackjack, Sebastian, Marco, Susi, and even Smell My Finger is in the chat, believe it or not. I what won't do name. that, but... Uh, what yes. a name. Good morning, Adara. How are you? TGIF. I'm, I'm great. Yeah, TGIF. Yeah. Um, as alluded by Sean on the, the morning show, I did fall asleep at 8 last night, so we are very overslept ah. today, and we are now ready to how to trade, as we do over here. Someone was asking me in the chat, how mm. did you do with that Tesla range trade? Unfortunately, I, like I said, I don't trade. I only trade in the, the during the midday period, so I have not seen this. But I see what you mean. This is a nice little look here. That 173.50 top is kind of spicy. We're seeing a bit of a downward move. I'm going to wait and see what happens here, but congrats to anybody who did have that range right now, though. NVIDIA, which um, on the one minute is looking... A little spicy for my range purposes. Look at this top around previous support mm. at 866, 886. NVIDIA, keep doing that and I'll get involved. But yes, that's mainly what I'm looking at right here. Thank you guys for the support in the chat. I did pass the test. I'm not live yet because it takes a couple days to go through. But um, yeah, this will hopefully be one of my last days trading in the sim. Amazing. I'm doing it. Um, I'm celebrating Adara passing uh, the test. Adara will be live on Monday. I can't tell you how proud I am of you, man. Good for you, and you're already killing it on your trading, so that just uh, was sort of, you know, an administrative thing that you had to get done. We all know how that is. Shout out to you, Adara. Monday live. Make sure to join us on how to trade. Adara will be trading live. All right, today, let's get right to it because we, uh, we got the lesson du jour to get to. We're talking about range trading all week, baby. And today, no different. We're going to get right to it. We're going to talk about range trading and volatility analysis because volatility can definitely have an effect on your range trading strategies. So let's get right to that today. So to, we'll dive into the world of volatility and explore how to use it to optimize your range trading strategy by understanding how prices fluctuate within a range, you can make more informed entry and exit decisions. So let's get right to the business. So the importance of volatility, let's talk about what volatility is as well as its importance to range trading. So essentially, if you're just new, volatility measures the extent to which price fluctuates over time. That is, you know, just the Merriam or whatever Webster dictionary uh, definition. However, in range trading, volatility will help determine the breathing room of the price within the defined range. So the more volatile the markets, they're gonna be the wider uh, the range. The, the more, uh, you know, less volatile the market, the tighter the range is gonna be. And that's what we express here. High volatility translates into wider ranges with obviously more potential profit, but also greater risk. That's kind of the trade-off you always get. Higher profit potential, higher risk. Conversely, low volatility results in tighter ranges with smaller potential gains, but lower risk. And again, we use the smaller and larger potential gains in air quotes, and that, that is because you can size up on a tighter range. Take 10,000 shares instead of taking 1,000 shares, okay? Just, you know, that's pretty basic. Here are some tools, though, that you can include in your arsenal to help you analyze volatility, especially within the context of range trading. We alluded to this specific indicator earlier this week, and we're going to allude to it again 
average true range, colloquially known as ATR, okay? This indicator measures the true range of price movement over a chosen period. Typically that period, the standard default is 14 days. You can change that though in your program. A rising ATR, so a rising number uh, in the average true range indicator, uh, which is basically suggesting a range expansion. Okay, so we're talking about range trading today. The wider, the bigger the ATR is, or the rising ATR in a chart typically will indicate to you that the range will expand. While a falling ATR, average true range, indicates potential range contraction. So that is good if you're looking for a range trade. You need to have one eye on the price action and the other on ATR because you need to know whether that range is gonna stay in effect. Bollinger Bands, also excellent for range trading. I'm gonna show you pictures of these later. These bands widen or contract based on volatility. The wider band suggests higher volatility and potentially a wider range, while a narrower band indicates lower volatility and a tighter range. And it behooves me here to bring in this side chart because on the top, you'll see the, the dark blue line, that is right there, let me just make this a little bit thicker so everybody can see it. The blue line on the top, that is the upper line of the Bollinger Band. And down here, this purple violet color, that is the lower band on the, um, for the volatility. And so when you, typically you will notice with Bollinger Bands is when the range gets tight, the distance between the lower band and the upper band will be super narrow. When things really start moving haywire and, and you know, the, the volatility picks up and the momentum starts going and the range trade starts, you know, being on the back burner, the gap, the distance between the lower band and the upper band really going to expand here. So you need to keep your eye on the range for uh, between the upper band and the lower band for a good volatility assessment there. So Bollinger Bands, average true range, all good indicators you can use. And there's also the historical volatility for the specific instrument in question. Anybody who traded Tesla in 2020, 2021, 2022 knows that it is Stressla, it is Mesla, it's not Bessla. Well, actually it could have been Bessla during those years, depending on how you trade it. So the whole point is to know that Tesla during those years was very volatile. So you need to look at the specific historical volatility for the instrument that you want to trade. Commodity, Forex, equities, ETFs, whatever the hell you want to trade, look at its historical volatility to know what's up, right? So, you know, I just went on a tirade there, but I can read what I wrote earlier. Analyze historical price charts to understand the typical range and the volatility of the asset you're trading. This can help you set realistic expectations for potential profits within the range. And uh, this is an excellent chart here. Shout out to Adair Panera for throwing this in. See, this is exactly what we were just talking about right now. This is the upper band of the Bollingers. It's super tight as the range is you know very narrow and then boom it goes to the dynamite we break through the range we start trending to the high side all of a sudden you see the, the the distance between the lower band and the upper band really start opening up and here is some methods that you can use to help you adapt your strategy to volatility so with respect to high volatility during periods of these high volatility consider using a wider stop loss order in order to account for the larger price swings that are occurring within the range you might also target slightly higher profits to compensate for the increased risk remember when we talked about that week on uh, on managing risk we talked about the risk to reward analysis right so if you're going to risk a little bit more you need to make a bit more money to keep that ratio in check so higher volatility you can consider using wider stop losses but also look for possibly a little bit loftier price targets if you are going long conversely if you're going short during periods of low volatility Tighten your stop losses in order to manage risk within the narrower range. You might also need to adjust your profit targets to reflect smaller potential price movements. Again, that just goes without saying. The range is tighter, your price is likely to stay closer to your entry than it would be during a more volatile time period. And consider taking profits within the range at previous support or resistance areas to make the most of the low volatility ranges and maximize your potential profits. So keep those little ideas in mind. And uh, 
I don't know what the hell I did with this journaling thing. Yeah, and journal. Oh, no, that was from yesterday. And here are some techniques to, uh, for combining your indicators. So you can combine volatility indicators like the ATR that we just talked about with other technical analysis tools for a more comprehensive picture. For example, you could use price action signals like the pin bars that we talked about that occur at support and resistance. These are the topping tail candles or bottoming tail candles that are more uh, relevant when they appear at key areas of support and resistance. Look at ATR and look for the formation of those candles candles um, to help you have some confluence between your uh, ideas there. And this could suggest a potential breakout attempt um, when it is occurring at uh, resistance or a breakdown when it is recur occurring at support. And remember guys, consider using volatility filters to focus on trading opportunities within your preferred range based on your risk tolerance. You could do things like increase the average true range from 14 days to 21, narrow it to 10, uh, any number of things that you could do. You could also use different moving averages and look for some crossovers there. Uh, we talked a lot about the distance between moving averages. Same kind of thing with Bollinger Bands. When the 20 and the 10 are really close to each other, likely, likely that the price hasn't really moved all that much, but when they start really separating from one another, the 10 really starts creating space between the 20, you know the volatility is picking up. So keep those little tidbits in mind. Oh, there Yeah, there. Uh, yeah, I think it's really cool. We have cool. a plethora of super we chats. We have a plethora of super chats that I definitely want to get to. Go. So let's start. Um, yeah, I love a plethora, great word. Thank you so much to Corey at two S's for the, um, 20 or the two dollar super chat thank you so much saying congratulations to Derek. you deserve it with a little chart emoji thank you very much um i said this in the chat as well i really appreciate all the support and i'm always just happy to be here with everybody also richardson 249 euro super chat thank you so much congrats to Dara. wishing everyone a great day we're also wishing everybody a great day thank you guys very much for the support. We also have Coral World Media. Just, I'm not seeing a message here, but 199 Super Chat, thank you very much to you. Last but not least, Dandelions, $5 Super Chat. Ooh. Yesterday I shorted MU. I didn't cover after losing big. I prayed to Alco God, <laughs> and now I'm break even. He's real. I so love that. um, congrats funny. to you. That Yeah, because Micron yesterday had that massive Alcohol. move up on the news that basically their, their losses with regards to the Taiwan uh, earthquake are to be less than expected. So interesting story there on Micron. Today, though, Micron giving back the ghost to use a term Ooh, used a little yes, bit on the yes. show. Um, decidedly below VWAP, decidedly weak. Oof is the best way to describe this chart for Micron. And maybe that's the semi I should be shorting instead of the semi I actually did short, which was NVIDIA. Uh, and this is a talk of ranges getting tighter than expected and having to adapt. So this, this range, initially I was like, oh, we could probably try to take about two bucks on it, this 884 area. We got about 884.50s, then went back up. So then I was like, Adara, adapt. We're gonna take 885.50s, which would have been great, except we got exactly one share filled here. We usually don't talk about position sizes, but I will say that we have all of the position except for one share still. <laughs> so I just thought that was pretty funny, so I wanted to address that. We did have to change our area slightly. Now if we can get out at 886, uh, sorry, 888, like 60s will be pleased as punch because apparently 88554 was like a really hot commodity area for whatever reason. So that's cool, NVIDIA, do your thing, 21. I do not like this higher, I am noticing these higher highs, higher lows, and the way we're writing this 90 MA, I am being cognizant of that. If we break decisively above into the 888 area, that's where I'm cutting the cord. But NVIDIA, you do need to give her a little bit more breathing room. So that's what I'm trying to do here with this trade. Yeah, How I was actually agreeing 100% with you. This is what I'm looking at, NVDL, 39.80. There is the obvious level of support. We obviously have that level of resistance there. So if I can get filled there, that would be fantastic. I already put that resting short order to get filled on NVDL. We'll see what ends up happening there. But there is a host of small cap gappers today that we have to get to. And um, a lot of them are above the volume weighted average price. Less now than when we first started, but here we go. Let's start with this one. INDO, nice move up here. What is happening? Okay, I have to mute my, uh, okay. INDO, uh, nice move up. Not sure what the catalyst is on this bad boy, but it's up 78%. I don't have a catalyst on today, nor do I really care, to be honest with you, because done 17 and a half million shares, $50 million market cap, 
The float on this is four and three quarter million. It's been holding the volume with an average price since the bell rung. But I got to tell you, this one volume really started coming in here at 1030. Yes, it was up uh, at the bell, but the volume didn't really start coming in hot and heavy on this bad boy till this candle right here. And that goes by the time at 1030. I don't really know why the volume started coming in at that time, but... Um, prior to holding the volume with an average price, it had been you know, dating, flirting with that 10 period EMA. All the dips into the green solid line were bought up. So good luck for INDO, H-U-S-A, HUSA, HUSA or whatever. Um, this one what is moving up nicely as well. This is a $25 million market cap. Houston America Energy, the float on this bad boy, 10 million shares to be exact. Uh, it put in a monster topping tail candle here, and I figured that was going to be the end of the matter. And we we're going to do a Christmas tree shaped retracement down maybe into that 160 where we opened up today. It was, alas, it was not to be. That topping tail candle came in very aggressively, and it actually, the candle subsequent to it was a five minute candle will make a new low, but lo and behold, bouncing off that 10 EMA yet again, and here we go, right back into that 240, 245 area. 254 is HOD, so we're literally 14 pennies off that high on HUSA. This is a former runner. I didn't even need to look at the daily chart. I remember this ticker, because it's kind of um, an easy one to remember. Another continuation, MNDR, this one IPO'd, a couple of days ago, and it's going yet again, 26% of the good today. Uh, a lot of check marks beside this one's name, but let me see on my platform now if we can actually get some details on MNDR because we still don't have any. Sadly, still nothing coming in on my, on my platform for Mobile Health Network Solutions, which is the official name of this company. It is doing the dance right now with $13. Beautiful bounce into the volume-witted average price there. Uh, so now I'm long NVDL, so I'm going to have to manage this trade. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of the short on NVDA. So that was, yeah, I took a bit of an L on NVDA. But that's okay. It is, you know, it's always unfortunate when you get um, part filled with exactly one share. But you know what? That's what trading is about. The highs, the lows. And I do think as well, once I go live, which again, what, you know, Monday. all things should be happening next week. Um, I will definitely be more aggressive with my profit taking. I should have been taking profits into that 884 Um 50 area. I just wasn't prepared for the range to get as tight as it did, uh, but that's okay. It happened. Um, and we are, you know, we're a little bit down, but we're definitely not out. And things I want to look at, I am trying to stay away a little bit from the spy because the spy has been kind of, you know, not, not my, my strongest suit as of late. So the one ETF I do have my little eyes on is this range action we've got going on in IWM. Look at this. We have this previous support around 200. We pop up into 220, then we uh, drop back to 200, and then we see this chop and turn. I was trying to get long this at uh, 199.70s, didn't get filled. That's okay. If you want to reject again at uh, 200 IWM, I'm not going to stop you. In fact, I might even join. So that's what's going to happen here. We're going to give this about 20 pennies. We're trying to get minimum 30 pennies, so I feel okay with that risk reward. Um, I want to watch, though, like I said, with ETFs, I'm very cognizant of what we're doing in the book. But look at this. We got all the way up to 200, and now we're like, like getting all scared away. So we are going to join this short here. I like this. The goal is to kind of continue to add as we get into 200s, then see what we do at $200.20. So I like that look. Also meta, getting a little bit interesting here. I'm never a fan of the spreada on meta, so I usually <laughs> don't get involved unless I love, 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 love what I'm seeing on the chart. And right now, I, you know, I'm not in love yet, but much like what NVIDIA is doing, coming back into these previous areas of resistance and getting a little fancy, trying to break back above VWAP. Look at this double top we had here at the 5 on 5.16.50. I like. I, I like. Lie. Also, I'm adding to the short here on the IWM. If we can get Phil perfect, please just punch. But, yeah, mostly I, I'd be interested in punching <laughs> in on meta, depending on what we do here, getting into this 5.16.50s. I don't have a sense of direction yet. It looks like I might be flipping long on some of these names. Happy I got out of video at 8.88. Um, so, yeah, just kind of taking a look and seeing what, what's coming in to fruition here. I will take one last look here at Microsoft um, and kind of seeing what we do here below, below VWAP. If we have a nice rejection here of this 520, 
5. 423 area that we had that pop into earlier, that could be an area of interest for me. How goes NVDL? It's okay. We're going to stop out if it breaks 40 on NVDL. So I'm just going to give it to you for a second because I have to put in yeah. my stops. No worries. Yeah. So perfect. I can answer this question then from Mahmood saying, would you long IWM or short today? I mean, I, I range, right? And I scalp. So whatever position I take is usually going to be shorter termed. Short, shorter, short term, shorter lived English. But yeah, so I, right now I'm short IWM. What I'm going to be looking for, though, as I kind of was mentioning, is building this position as we get into 200s, then um, getting rid of it as we get to this bottom of this range at 199, 50, here, 70, 199, 60. I like this look. We're going to add a little bit here, too, and we're going to piece this out as we get low, 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 low. I'm getting out of this because the market is turning here, guys. Uh, if we do a big move up here on the Fuge uh, into 18.3, this will be an interesting area to see what equities or the Meg 7 name specifically uh, do on this uh, on this day because well, we broke through 18.3 quite aggressively earlier. Uh, we did have a, a little bit of an, uh, a consolidation area popped up back into the 50, then really tanked. So here we go. We're curling up here. Let's see if we can continue to curl up on the NQ. We're curling up on a lot of these names. I see a lot of you in the chat saying Apple just put in a big boy candle in the VWAP. I absolutely see that. 176 jump into 176.80s, and then we retrace a little bit, closing that candle down at the quarter dollar. But look at this, the candle subsequent to it, right back up into 176.50s, but still trading below the volume weighted average price. And if you're looking for this consolidation low at 176.75, we're still not above it at the moment. So interesting look here on AAPL and the market in general as it started curling up aggressively there. So we'll keep eyes on both those bad boys. I'm still going to be interested on a possible short on NVDA, but uh, or NVDL, excuse me. Uh, let's see if we can weasel our way into a trade with a better price around here on NVDL. So look, take that short. Again, then I'm going to try to fight this one maybe into uh, a 40, 10 or so. Uh, stop. What are you guys looking at? Ben Lane, Sharif or Sheriff, I guess, uh, Ben Lane writes, NVDL going to VWAP, then falling back down. You were just a little too early. That's a good analysis. I see NVDL has a VWAP around 4020, uh, 4021, a little bit below the quarter dollar. To be honest with you, uh, Ben Lane, I'll tell you what I was looking at here on NVDL. And it was essentially uh, using this area of support earlier now, or sorry, Previous support, and there was supposed to be resistance. That's why I got in at this area. We'll see now if the whole dollar wants to hold up at these levels. We're rejecting, uh, looks like, for the moment, this um, 890 area. All right, we'll see if uh, NVDL can make its way down, uh, wet our beak on some profits here. We'll see. Oscar plays. Isn't the spread not so nice on NVDL? You're not the first person to tell me that. I was talking to Yanni a couple of days ago uh, back there, and he's like, man, the, the spread on NVDL as well. But I'm looking at it right now. It's one penny. Now it's two. Now it's one. So I, I'm not that disappointed with uh, the spread on NVDL, or I haven't been lately. I mean, it's two pennies on a $40 name. That's not that bad. What's the spread on NVDA? <laughs> Probably worse. Well, obviously. Definitely worse. But, um, how much? 30 pennies at the moment. It, obviously, it's hard to see because it fluctuates so much. But, yeah, uh, we'll keep eyes on both of these bad boys. Right there. Yeah, I am really pleased as punch so far with this IWM short. Right now, um, like I said, I'm trying to be get more aggressive with my profit takers as I work um, towards, you know, obviously trading live, which is going to be happening soon. So what I'm doing Thanks. is... I have plans for this trade, and those plans involve 10 peak wetters. I know. This is crazy. We already have three out. Pleased as dang punch without mm. being able to punch out of these. So right now, about 10 pennies in the money, three beak wetters. Um, we have seven more, and we're just taking them. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm watching the book like a hawk. What I'm noticing, we're like having a little bit of a move down. We take... Uh, about a tenth of our shares out. So that was, this is very much a planned, like I said, I was planning on building the positions we get into 200 and then planning on letting it like air out of a balloon as we get to the downside. So just Ow. pinprick uh, with 10 shares <laughs> or with 10% with of my position. Sorry, I'm not 10 shares. It's actually, it's not even accurate. I don't even know why I said 10 shares. 10% of my position every time as we just pop that balloon to the downside. Right now though, IW, I'm trying to go back up here. Let's see what we do with 200. Every time we've gotten near this 200 area, we've rejected. I'm not really interested in adding to the position right now because that is not part of the plan. Um, so we're just gonna let, Usa. we're gonna breathe and we're gonna let IWM breathe. Pardon? Do Wusa? You're gonna do a Wusa? 
Oh, you don't know what Usa is? No. Bad Boys. Oh, I haven't seen that movie. Usa. No, it's Bad Boys 2. I haven't seen any of them, or Bad Boys for Life. No way. No. You never seen this Usa? I, like, apparently, Usa. I need to watch this movie. No, I know it's like Martin Lawrence in Wicked. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, Martin Lawrence, he, like, he's the partner that's more neurotic. Oh, OK. And Will Smith is just. It's he's, Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's chilling and stuff, right? So, I need to watch that. Okay. Uh, he has to go see a psychiatrist for all the gunfights that they get into all the time. So a psychiatrist gave him a little like idea. He's like, do the Usa and rub your ears. I need to do that. Yeah, I need to watch that for some, for some training. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're kidding, of course. Okay. Um, so keeping an eye on some of these names, let's see what else is moving here in these markets. What are you guys looking at today? Wow, banks, BAC says Rick Diaz. Well, banks started reporting, baby, so we're probably going to see a lot more of that. Let's look at BAC, see what Bank of America is up to. Today it was not a good look. No, not NAC, Sharif, BAC. Today it was, uh, look, I still don't really understand what the hell is going on with J.P. Morgan. I mean, Brendo tried to explain it to me a, bit, a little bit here with net interest income coming down. But, like, I don't know, it didn't seem all that bad to me. So, uh, BAC at days low, bit of a range here between 36 and 35 to the downside. So, we'll see what this one does at the moment. Uh, but it is at lows at 35. So, we'll keep eyes on that one. But looks like NVDL uh, wants its intent on going above 40. Uh, so we're going to put our stop at 40.12 and we'll cover the whole position if it makes its way up there. Let me see what I've got over here. Yeah, what the hell is going on here? Why is it doing that? Can I just send it to you? So yes, I have to you put can. it in my yeah. stop. Yeah. So um, I have, my eyes are back on the cyber truck. Shockingly, plot twist of the century. Adara considering trading Tesla. No, I'm joking. But I do, but I'm not joking about my look on Tesla. I want to see what we do here as we kind of get into this 172.70 area. This line is left over from yesterday. That was an area I was waxing poetic about yesterday, and I did have some decent scalp, scalp shorts off of that area. So, Tesla, if you want to reject here, I'm not going to complain. I will not complain. Also, AMD doing something very interesting. Um, I was... And by that, I mean, look at this kind of consolidation we have around VWAP. I don't want to say flat bottom break, but I do think there's certainly lower highs here and a lot of chop and churn around VWAP. I did initially have an order here to get in 163.80, and I took it out because I was very preoccupied with the IWM. Um, so I want to see what we do here on this level. I do think the lower highs are interesting. Maybe we're going to be interested. Uh, let's do just maybe this 164 area because that was where we had a little bit of chop and churn. I, I want to have my eyes more on I, or on AMD before I decide to get involved, though, especially because right now IWM kind of curling back up. So we'll have to wait and see what we do here. We are out of um, two-fifths of the position right now, so pretty pleased with that. So we're going to have to wait and see. Um, IWM right now curling back off that 210 area, so that could be maybe a little bit of an ad, and then we just scalp out back at 90s. We're going to have to wait and see on that. Um, but yeah, pretty pl pleased as punch with how I've been executing the IWM trade so far, very much according to plan. Just doing my little scalps, doing my thing, 21, and trying to play some ranges. Amazon making it back up into the volume with an average price. Nice curl up here. As like equities are starting to show you a little bit of a different look. Uh, there's not a whole bunch of them are above VWAP, but Amazon is making it back into that 187.50. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. And the other one that's really making moves here right now is Meta. Meta was the dead one yesterday and is still down one and a quarter percent. But look at this retracement off that 512 exactly right back into 516 and a half and above the volume weighted average price here is Meta. Again, uh, as Adara mentioned, kind of spready. So trade this carefully. Um, yeah, so I'll keep my eye on Meta. Microsoft curling up here. It looks like Apple's really the laggard here with respect to trying to make it back above VWAP because you have NVIDIA now at VWAP. This might get me out of my trade. Tesla is above VWAP. Microsoft above VWAP. Google's on its way. It looks like a little bit here, 158.50. So the market is doing things here now, trying to decipher exactly what direction we're going to go. NVIDIA's coming right back into the volume weighted average price. Does it respect it? The Katina is looking at taking some out here on NVDA, and I don't blame him. And I just got stopped out of my NVDL position because NVDA is on the way up here, baby. Looks like it's on its way to 893. We're at 892 and a half at the moment. The market does look like it's curling up. We broke above 18,250 now on the Fuge. And so now keep your eye on this area here. 18,275 seemed to be a little bit of a bottom earlier. That takes us back to around 1015 or so. It's also the 50 
50 period on the five. So keep an eye on that. And look at this area as well. We had a pretty discernible uh, consolidation low at 18,275 for whatever reason, not a typical level that I chart. Usually I like the, these 100 point levels, but we'll take it, we'll, we'll call it out where we see it. So 18,275 or thereabouts could be that resistance zone, but it doesn't look like anything stopping at the moment. That is unless you are AAPL, everything on the way possibly here to the high side, but we'll keep eyes on this. Let's flip to some of these small cap gappers and see what we got with them. Anything popping off here? INDO breaking down now below VWAP. We were singing this one's praise earlier, saying that it was one of the only ones left trading above the volume weighted average price, now broken down below that. So we'll see how long this one could last for. Also, HUSA as well, breaking down just, you know, by pennies here, uh, below the volume weighted average price. VWAP at 225, trading at 222 HUSA. It hasn't had too many bouts below VWAP, at least not on a closing basis. You've had a couple of wicks, um, namely this candle over here that just closed. So yeah, maybe these small caps look like they may be turning here in not a good way. Let me look at my scanner to see if anything else is popping off. Not really. So these small cap gappers look like they're all turning. Let's flip back into, yeah, NVIDIA is going up, Katina, man. Yeah, the Katina man is long NVDA at these levels. He's $4 in the money there, baby, off that. What word you get in? 889? Eight, 890. The Katina man is long 890 on NVDA. And there we go, right into the 50 period moving average, right above pivots here on. Say that again? He got half out for $2 in the money at 892. And now he's. Two more dollars in the money, four dollars total, almost three. Katina, man, it's on the way to eight nine five here. Shout, shout out to him. You should have told me that before I got into my dang NVDL short. So yeah, Katina, man, on the way up, baby. On the way up. Uh, but the yeah, way up. lots of people mentioning gold. Apparently, big drop in gold. So let's take a look at this. Um, doo -doo -doo, gold, do you want to help me? Okay. Um, let's see what we're doing in G O. LD, is that NY? Um, they, yeah, people were asking for GOLD. GLD that on ticker. AM. Oh, yeah, that's what people were, oh my gosh, yeah, this is the five minute. Um, so this was the ticker people were, were mentioning, um, or some people were mentioning GLD as well, so look at that too. Um, oh, okay, so gold's a minor, so let's look at GLD. Thank you, thank you, Sean, I appreciate that. Yeah, oh, below previous support. Wow, to the downside. Down. Let's see if there's any news on this. Could it just be news? that the market got a little exhausted? Let's find out. Um, not seeing anything on this. Oh, so apparently the gain initially, what I'm seeing is we have the, the geopolitical conflict. So some people were attributing the gain to that. So maybe I don't really know what the drop is on this then explaining that. But if we find out, we shall let you know. I do have that open right now. I'm going to probably get out of this AMD short soon. But yeah, this gold is... It's not right now. Um, not not all that glitters is gold. I'll tell you that for real. And not all that is gold is up because right now gold is down, and that was after that big move up we had, right? So, uh, right now AMD. I'm watching to see kind of what we do into this um, 30s and 40s area. We got in, we rejected it. If you want to keep rejecting it, like look at these wicks here. AMD does not want any smoke above this like 45 area. I watched. We got up to 43s. I had my finger ready to punch out, and then it was like, no, we're good. I was like, okay, okay, AMD. I'm not gonna stop you. Do your thing, 21. We're getting out here. I, I like just this VWAP area. We're just taking this to the, the VWAP area. The reason I got short this is because even as the rest of the market was having slow swoop up, AMD was a little bit quieter. It's kind of the shy guy of the of of the semiconductors today. So I'm like, you know what, AMD, if you want to chill out, I will let you. I have no problem with that. Also, IWM apparently decided to very much respect my stop area. I have no idea why. But so I said, if we get above $200.20, I'm getting out. I watched, we kind of stutter step near it, then we drop back. Obviously, that can change at any moment, but if it's going to respect this for the time being, who am I to judge it? Who am, so I? I, w, who am I, WM? So if it's going to keep doing this, I'm pleased as punch. It looks like someone else is too. How is the trade going? He, he, the Katina man is now done with. Oh, no. oh, what happened? What happened? Oh, it's only $5 in the money now with the Katina man. I mean, that's uh, very sad for you there, Sean. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. Uh, shout out to Sean. 
uh, killing it over there on the other side of the desk. I was gonna say, you, you remind me of that song because we just talked about Bad Boys mm. and you said Shy Guy. And I know you didn't watch Bad Boys 1, but that's one of the shots. I oh, don't I know want that song. no shy guy. I just want a fly guy. Actually, oh, no, no, it's the other way. I don't want no fly guy. I just, I want, just a shy want a shy guy. guy. No, I won't, yeah. Sorry. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I was like, not pretty for sure full and singing. I'm having here. a good time over here. Yeah, we, we always have a great time on the show. Thank you, everybody, so much for your support. ACB, we people love being are here. saying. ACB. Yeah, yeah, let me have a look here at Aurora Cannabis. Let's pull up ACB, baby. Because uh, apparently, according to people, it's doing things. So let's have a look. Yes, ACB is on the way up. I have no idea what's going on with Aurora Cannabis here. Seven and a third. It's in a full state of pamp it uh, off that six and a half. And while it's up three quarters of a dollar right now through that seven and a third. Let's see if there's anything coming in on my blotter to account for this midday move. 11.30, I see something here. Aurora Cannabis Options Alert. Okay, so there's an options, uh, you know, notification here about things happening. Nothing specifically on the 12th, but I did get some stuff on the 11th. FDA chief sees no reason for delay in cannabis rescheduling. Okay, this came in what time yesterday though? That came in yesterday, I'm not sure exactly what time, but there you go, positive catalyst here possibly for weed in general. So let's have a look at what weed is doing as a group. No, no, Aurora Cannabis and CGC, as well as Cron, C-R-O-N, the only green names, everything else red, MSOS, MSOX, the ETFs both red, Grow Generations red, Tilray red. So we'll continue to watch, see if anything is uh, going on here. Oh no, what happened to my friend's company? It got removed? Okay. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> he, used to, he was on the show, by the way. Yeah, I gotta show you. No, it's, it's still there, just, I, I think I removed the privileges uh, for it. All right, we're nicely in the money here on AAPL. We're, a couple, we're about 20 pennies in the money as Apple now is back at the volume weighted average price. Let's see if Apple can make a recovery here like the overall market is, Adair. Yeah, I, speaking of recovering the overall market, I'm flipping long IWM. I got out of the short exactly how I planned. Please just punch, did not make any profits, I am. Right on everything today, not gonna lie, this has not been my trading day, but you know what that means? Things can only get better from here. Although as someone once did point out in the chat, which is very accurate, with trading, things can always get worse. But we're gonna be optimistic, <laughs> so, so um, you know what? I, I can recognize the truism of that statement and also wanna be optimistic, so we're gonna do a little bit of that. Right now, IW, I'm giving you this kind of nice 13 cent range, hyper specific from about $200, five cents, $200, seven cents, up into 220, if we break below 200, I'm Audi. I'm not staying above this. 200 is really interesting. So um, if we break below, I'm probably gonna lose interest here. Maybe I got out of the short too early, but you had to do things according to plan. This green triangle, by the way, this is not a buy. This was me getting out of my short. That was a cover. I just wanna clarify. So we did, did had a quick dip below 200. We got right back up. If you wanna stay above 200 IWM, I will take you gladly into the 220. You tell that IWM, Adara. I will, thank you very much, Sharif. Look, like we just had that massive pop here. We get down to 200, at uh, 199.99, right back up. So, <laughs> sorry for the aggression there, but that's how this thing's good moving. Good thing you weren't on camera, that was intense, I like it. Was it? Oh. Yeah, it was pretty intense. It was a good thing though, good intense. Appreciate that. Well, that's why I was saying, we gotta talk fast sometimes, so these markets are the businessness. There you go. Uh, we're moving up on AAPL. I mean, Huang family was jokingly, well, probably not jokingly, probably actually felt this. Apple, the dead one. How many times have you heard me call Apple the dead one? Many times. Uh, it is breaking through the volume weighted average price, though. So let's see if it's able to hold on to this little ascent uh, that it's doing. I'm going to be looking for what it does at the whole dollar. If it gets into that 177 area, let's see. Number one, does it make it up there? And then number two, what it does. Does it do the dance with no pants? The wick shimmy dance. There are many different dances guys that it can do right so we'll see exactly what we get uh when we get up there but i gotta tell you looking at some of these other names that have uh you know kind of slowed down in their ascent i'm talking about some of these mag 7 names here i'm talking about you tesla i'm talking about you amazon even you too meta and microsoft because they're both putting in red candles after that nice curl up here on both on all of these bad boys Tesla curling up, even even goggles. Shout out to the Obe, the one, the Kenobe uh, for that. I like that little. So do I. Thing. Yeah, goggles. Yeah. Anyway, point is, um, I want to see exactly um, if Apple can kind of 
do a little bit of a different dance than some of these guys here and not curl back down. So we'll see if it can, well, it did a, its own kind of independent uh, move yesterday on that headline. So Apple will see exactly what it's up to. I'm, I'm feeling like I want to short Amazon at these levels here. And I was thinking that too. Can I tell you why? I don't know if this is the reason that you're seeing, but this obviously and VWAP. And uh, what uh, this, I, I, I think Adair is pointing to this range over here. I was. That we're, yeah, okay, that we're talking about. And then you also have that confluence aspect of it with uh, VWAP being at that exact same level. That level, you, in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, 187.50 or thereabouts, former previous area of support in the morning, now acting as a bit, I don't want to call it a resistance level, we're just holding up briefly at these levels. So we'll see what we get here. The Fuge still didn't make its way up to 18.3. In fact, this topping tail candle over, what did it do? 18.291. So we'll see. Uh, we could recover here. Who knows, man? Uh, but as Sean said, there are uh, things happening in the Middle East, okay? We don't typically get into politics on the show, but when there is some overlap with uh, finance, we're going to talk about it. Anything could happen at any time. It looks as if between Iran, the United States, and Israel, if that happens, if there are belligerencies, likely the market will tank, okay? So uh, we need to keep an eye on that, and then also keep your eye on oil. You have to keep your eye on oil here because it's a Middle East problem, and we know where the majority of the, uh, the oil comes from. So uh, keeping an eye on the overall market, keeping an eye on oil. Obviously, today we have to be aware of the geopolitical uh, stuff that's going on. And uh, yeah, that's about it. What are what are you looking at over there? Yeah, so today the theme of the day is going to be very brief scalps that I am taking very viciously, and we are taking them with shares, and we are taking no prisoners. Oh. Um, sorry for the I intensity like there, but I, I'm uh, like, look at this Tesla. I'm trying to get short this 43s, and then just take it to like around 172. And I want to explain why. Go. I have been waxing poetic for now two days about Tesla 172.70. We did break up into 173 on Tesla, and but look where these candles close. That's right, 172.70. This is an area for Tesla. I don't know why. All I do is look at charts, but this is the second day in a row. Tesla has run into some weird resistance with 172.70. So Tesla, if you're going to show me that, I, I'm going to have to trick you. You know, that's just how it goes. <laughs> It's just, you know, you I like yeah. how you're threatening the stock. Well, like, I'm not, Tesla, if you continue to act in this way, I'm going to have to trade you and take money off you. you tell that's that true. Stock, I made it Dara. seem like I was a little bit more upset with it than I actually am. I'm actually pleased as punch with it. Because, you know, Fabian was saying uh, yesterday, Good. kind of alluding to the idea, shout out to Fabian, that um, why I like range trading is because I like certainty. To me, there is not a lot of certainty in these markets often, but there is something bizarre about Tesla 172.70. So I think with that in mind, you can probably guess perhaps where my stop's gonna be on this trade. That's right, 172.70. <laughs> so let's see what we do in Tesla. For now though, I also wanna talk about this NVIDIA trade. This is how I need to be trading NVIDIA. This is not what I didn't do earlier today and what I should have done. And I got to get some uh, vengeance. And why I say vengeance, I mean avenge trading, not revenge trading. I was really happy with this. Get involved around 194.50 with the potential to add at 194.05-ish. We didn't get back down there, so we just took a dollar off this, off that. Um, so I said one, I meant 894. 894, basically took this about 894.50 to 895.50. Got top wick on this one minute candle, which often doesn't happen, so I was pretty pleased as punch. Nice. But again, thank you. This is just, this is the type of trading I need to be doing. Scalping off of ranges. That was where I got a little bit bitten Pamp over it. here. Pamp it. Um, except Tesla, not you, Tesla. Don't do that. But pamp <laughs> it for Apple. How is yeah? It's going Apple? really well right now, Adara. We're uh, we're um, well, we're working our way incrementally uh, into that 177 area that we spent a little bit of time at um, this morning. You'll notice between around 10 to around 10:25 or thereabouts, 25 minutes, half an hour, we were doing the dance with 170, 177. Excuse me, a little bit above, a little bit below. We're printing now 176.90. Uh, let's see what we do at the whole dollar level, but it's a roundy bottom as the NOS, the boss, uh, likes to say again, Michael Moss, shout out to you. Congratulations on the birth of your new child. Obviously, you know, we're going to we're going to send our love multiple times. I didn't have an opportunity. There was another individual today uh, covering for the NOS boss from Trade Ideas. So shout out to him uh, for coming through. But yeah, uh, we'll uh, we want to shout out the NOS boss. baby. All right. One seventy six low 90s here on AAPL. Now we're getting mid 90 prints. Okay, so now we're back above 1% for 
to the good on AAPL. Let's see if we can curl up here. I'm not selling. I mean, there's just really no reason for me to sell at these levels. I don't see anything from a technical perspective that says Sharif sell, so I'm just going to pack my patience. I'll smack that roundy bottom. All right, big Kyle Burdett. Shout out to you, my man. <laughs> He's always... Uh, Always uh, saying uh, borderline stuff in the chat, but that's why we love Big Kyle. I mean, by the <laughs> JF Trader, I've tried threatening stocks and flipping off my screen. It never works. Shout out to you, JF Trader. Uh, neither does throwing slippers oh. or other, um, you know, objects uh, around. I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, this is obviously my early days. I don't throw slippers around here on the firm. Otherwise, uh, I'd find myself on the way home quite quickly. Yeah, that's, right. I, I guess I that's not really the place for that. Slippers uh, yeah. in an area where there's a plethora of, uh, you know, equipment. So people would be pretty entertained around yeah. here because oh, we're yeah. all we we all we have a good time. But yeah, that Absolutely. would definitely not be the vibe. Probably. No, it's not. No, it's not. Um, also, was not the vibe. Tesla, you know, he was he was respecting that 172.70 so well. I was not able to get out of this as quickly as I wanted to, but we did uh, get out, so that's all good. Um, we're gonna we're gonna watch again. Not I'm not positive on any names right now. Just being honest here, as we do on how to trade. But that means again, we're just gonna keep working. We're gonna keep doing it. We did make some back on NVDA with that little baby scalp. So that's the type of trading I want to be doing on Nvidia. Is just these quick one dollar scalps with size. With that in mind. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of this long I did earlier, but it looks like the long might now be wrong in NVIDIA. If we stay below this 894.50 area, which I like because look how well we rode that 9 EMA earlier. Also happens to be the level I took the long off of, so I like a reversal. Uh, but yeah, NVIDIA, if you want to stay below this area, somebody's going to go short. And that someone is me. So um, yeah, let, let's see what we do here. 894, this could be a spicy short on... Um, on NVIDIA. Also, now Tesla, again, struggling with 172.70. Tesla. We call it Tesla for a reason. Yeah, yeah. It's, so I'm going to let her, like, fight her battle at 172.70. But if she wants to, like, you know, give up the fight at the level that she likes stopping the fight at, someone's going to go short. And okay. again, I will continue to be that person. Love it. NVIDIA trying to push back up now. It is, and uh, I'm seeing, okay, guys, I'm seeing uh, Meta defend volume weighted average price. I'm seeing Amazon now break through VWAP. Here's what I'm looking at here. There's these great looking bottoming tail hammer candles here on Meta. Look at that dip down into 516, the aggression with which buyers are picking up Meta at these levels above VWAP. It's still down on the day. There's no question about that. But this is the kind of candle you want to see if you're looking at getting a VWAP trade. And look at it, breaking through 517. Go, Meta. Let's see if this one can break that critical support level one on pivots. And it's not just the fact that pivots are hanging out there. Look at that pre-market low, uh, consolidation low, pre-market consolidation low, right at that 518, 517, and two-thirds thereabouts. It's a $500 stock, right? So the areas are not going to be too, too exact. Uh, so Meta looking real good here. Amazon back above VWAP, even the softy right above uh, – VWAP as well, trying to break through that 424 and a half or the 50 period moving average. Uh, AAPL came a little bit back down off that 177 touch. We're back at 176 and a quarter. I'm trying to pack my patience here to see if we can break through the whole dollar level. I don't want to paper hand this trade and take out, um, you know, the shareage at the wrong level. I'm looking for a key technical single signal to get out, to be told, okay, well, this is uh, the time to get out. A lot easier said than done, obviously. Uh, it's still trading above the volume weighted average price. I'm talking about AAPL. Let's see if it's able to hang out there and break above that level. John says, NVIDIA in an inverse head and shoulders, it looks like. Let's have a look. If that's an inverse head and shoulders, John, then that would be a, a hell of a long. You already saw the Katina man just take $4 on that monster. So here it is. Look, you're not wrong. This could be the left shoulder over here with the head. We just haven't formed the right shoulder yet. And we're going to have to dip down a little bit, maybe into an 890, dip and hold, for that right shoulder to form before we break above 895, right? Otherwise, we don't have a right shoulder on the head and shoulders. And what I do like about your analysis, John, is that if an inverse head and shoulder forms here, it is preceded by a downtrend. And that's typically what we look for when we look for reversal patterns, right? We're looking for a downtrend and then the formation of the reversal pattern. And then we see the reverse of the trend go to the high side. So good look, but it's gonna have to form, 
you know, more discernibly than it is right now if we're gonna, if we're gonna really rely on that pattern to get long on 895. So shout out to you, John, good eye there. Chef Joe, the right shoulder is broken. <laughs> Dislocated, right? Uh, big Kyle Burdett, ES, 5200 NQ, south of 83, agree. Kyle, um, look, look what I, you know I don't really look at the ES all that much. Uh, unless I'm on the big desk in the morning, but 83, uh, sorry, 18.3, we're doing the wick shimmy dance from the south side, and that's not what you want to see. Look, we haven't gotten quite to 18.3 yet. This is the closest candle over here, 18.291. I'd rather see a nice rejection off the actual level, 18.3, before, you know, uh, celebrating too much. Wow, we were just printing mid-70s on AAPL, and down it goes right back into my entry. So if I was looking for a reason to get out, well, what might be now here, Dara? Yeah, I mean, th this market, I have no words. I'm just so pleased to punch with AMD right now. AMD. Um, we, really, we're trying to have some AM redemption. That didn't, that worked better in my head, but that's okay. Um, Avenge trading in AMD. And so what happened here is I didn't love my point of entry. I also had really small positions, so this wasn't like any massive loss, except for my pride. No, I'm joking. But basically, <laughs> I got involved here because I like these lower highs, kind of chopping and turning around VWAP. Didn't end up working out. We got up when we, we pushed above those uh, pretty decisive wicks here at 164.40. Then I said, Adara, if you still like 164.40 as you're out for the short, we can't get above it. Why not just take this baby short in the range? So I did. Uh, right now, we are Very literal nice. pennies away from our last exit point. So AMD, if you want to get like a couple pennies lower here. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, that's cool. AMD, um, yeah, it's always frustrating when things get like pennies away from your exit point, but that's all good. Really proud of this trade. Um, oh, it looks like we got filled, Bang. so please just punch. Uh, basically, what I was doing here is I was looking, we're talking about, uh, I know I'm not any expert by any means, but we're talking about ranges this week, so if I, I kind of want to talk about my impetus for the profit taking on this range, if I may. So my first, I, I got in here around this 40s. I like that we were kind of seeing this rejection even as the market was moving up. Then, in terms of where I chose my profit takers, look at this doji at 164 tens. That's where we're going to get profit taker number one. Number two was around this 164 area. Yeah, that was a bit more arbitrary. I just kind of like this chop and turn area. Last but not least, I wanted to go above VWAP, but I didn't want to get as close to the bottom of the range because I did see this kind of doji, and I was like, this could be a bit of a long, so I don't want to give us that much room. Got out at 90s. So, that, yeah, I just wanted to kind of explain the impetus for that. We're talking about sometimes in these less volatile areas, and this AMD range is certainly pretty tight. You want to make sure that you're, let, you're not letting it breathe too much, and you're giving, like, little punches of it so you can take the profits and not get spooked out. So that's what happened with AMD. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, I'm really proud of this range. And uh, NVIDIA is looking like she wants to give me a bit of a range too, so I might Yeah, I was just about to say that. 895 range there at the top. I don't know what you're seeing on your side. I'm, gonna, I'm getting out of AAPL for, well, for about a five penny loss there on the last little bit. But this is the look. I like this look here on NVIDIA. Look at this wick shimmy dance with 895. And we know that that was kind of the top earlier as well. We didn't really have too many candles closing above 895. You had these two over here. Other than that, it was just wicks. So interesting look here on NVDA at these levels as we also don't make it back up above to 18.3. So there is some confluence there between the MAG7 names and the, uh, what are they called? The Yeah, and the futures. So keeping an eye on that, let's flip back. Wow, Aurora Cannabis retraced the entire move off 7.35 right back into lows. So I have no idea what the hell that was on Aurora Cannabis, but it's really not that important. All right, flipping back here to NVDA. So this is going to be an interesting area. We could try to range trade. Just as Adira was saying, this 895 area, the equivalent area on NVDL being about 40, 40, 40, 35, thereabouts. Looks like it's ranging now, and that is the pre-market, or not pre-market, the earlier area of consolidation from around 930 to around 1030. So but an, an hour consolidation at this area. Kyle Burdett, NVIDIA, I'm short again. Shout out to you, Kyle. Kill it, baby. Uh, what else we got? Apple, come on, says Brad Gober. Yeah, Apple disappointed me too. We could have taken profits at 177. We wanted the whole dollar break, and we ended up paying the price there. We were 60 pennies on the money on a very small piece, though. Uh, let's see what else people are talking about. Ben Lane says, boom. I don't know what you're looking at, Ben, but shout out, shout out to you. Looks like you're printing on that. Let's see what other people are talking about here. Yeah, okay. Tight stop on Tesla, says Big Rob. Okay. Yeah, well, Tesla's kind of doing that same 
consolidative move at maybe 173, thereabouts. So we'll see exactly what we get there. Let's flip back to some small cap gappers, see what they're doing. And some mag seven names are, I forgot about this easy go. This thing absolutely tanked. I didn't even bother mention easy go. This was well over 100% rejected. Oh, yeah, now it's well down off uh, the highs and below VWAP, so I'm not gonna trade that. INDO is really the only small cap gapper that MNDR and INDO because it's trading above VWAP. But how I get into this, a bit of a tougher look. Didn't really respect VWAP over here for whatever reason, but it bounced beautifully off the 20. 20 is the yellow line on my chart. Maybe we'll set up a dip trade here at the 20, or that could have been, that could have been done by now, who knows. So keeping an eye on some of these names. Apple trying to defend 176 as well, so. Yep, that's really all I have to say about that. Nice. Yeah, hopefully, um, ho maybe you can get another bite of the apple there. That hopefully. Uh, but yeah, so NVIDIA, I want to talk about this. So Kyle Burdett was mentioning in the chat the five-minute flat top on NVIDIA, and I liked it as well. I mean, look at this, like, whoop. Nice. I did, to be fair, I took a log off of it, but it was like a, a scalp log off the one minute. But um, but yeah, this this flat top is, whoop, and we had it earlier too. Like, I like when previous consolidation comes out and says, hey, uh, Sharif was mentioning that as well. But yeah, so right now I do have... I have all my entries planned. All I need is for NVIDIA to come walk through the door. Making it sound like we're in some romance movie, like uh, Jerry Maguire, you have me at hello. I don't know. <laughs> but honestly, uh, NVIDIA, you if you can sell at these levels, you'll have me at cello. So I'm trying to get in here at this 193, 70s-ish. Then we have another position ready, 194. Then run 194. Why do we keep saying one? 894.50. If we break above this 895 uh, areas decisively, we're getting out. I don't know if we'll get those areas, but I also have to stay true to those are the areas I want to get involved in. So if we don't get in, we don't get in. But um, Meta, though, also kind of giving me the, the wave. So let's see how she's doing. And look at this range on META. Chef's kiss. Uh, we have this <laughs> bottom around VWAP, which also comes into confluence with this earlier uh, top and turn we had here that 115, 116.20 area. And then we kind of take this top at Eight, what? Nine, 5, 17, 25. So to me, this is a, a little interesting area of consolidation here at Meta. On Meta. That's no, I don't even think so. I, I'm just saying words. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I like what we're doing here. I want to watch and make sure that this is a good area of entry. But I do think that... And the spread is not even that bad right now. Okay, we're, we're punching in at meta. We're doing it. Getting in at 31s, getting in not, you know, this is a fine amount of shares. We're not getting too many shares. And then if we break kind of below into this VWAP, so we're giving this about 516, giving you about 30 pennies, trying to make about a dollar. So I'm, I have no problem with that risk and reward. Just got filled the first part of NVIDIA. Please just punch. Don't, I just did uh, those thumbs up without saying anything, so that was kind of weird. Lolo saying, love Adara's badge. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I, I just we, we just talk a lot over here, so I'm happy when, when it's well appreciated, but it looks like someone I'm back in, baby. started eating the apple. I'm back in, baby. We'll see if we can hold this 176. Honestly, I wanted the, the dip at the 50 period. I didn't get the dip at the... I put my order at 85, 175, 85. Sadly, I didn't get filled, so it looks like it's defending the whole dollar here and the 50 on the five. We'll see if Apple can make its way back up. We'll look to wet our beak maybe uh, in a little bit. Kyle Burdett, I sent an email to Real Trading to try and get hooked up with you to share those fishing pages. My man, just send me a message on Instagram. Don't even bother. Just send me a message on Instagram and uh, I'll respond to you right away, Kyle. So uh, I think my Instagram cycles every now and again uh, by uh, stream Streamlabs. Um, yeah, thank you, Bears for Bears versus Bulls, the world's greatest moderator. Thanks for throwing that in there again. Shout out to you, Kyle. CompuCare team, hello, my friend. Can you check Tesla long near VWAP? Yeah, it looks like it's range trading CompuCare uh, at VWAP. Are you in Tesla? No. You're oh, I didn't, but look what area Tesla respected once again. That's what I'm saying. I think that's what he's looking at, too. What do you think of that level? I'm obsessed. Honestly, if we bounce off VWAP, I'm getting long and taking it to 172.70. But this is so upsetting. This is what bamboozlement is. We break above that 172.70, so I have to leave. And I basically get out top wick, and then it kind of does what I want to do. Clearly, my entry, though, on this was very flawed. So I should not have been getting short off VWAP. But hey, if we bounce here, I'm getting long. And if not, I am taking that beautiful 172.70 level short. Because that that, that's the level for me. And it's like, if I like it, that shouldn't be my stop. That should be my entry. So that's my take on that. 
Um, right now, okay. please just punch with NVIDIA. Just letting her do her thing, 21. 21. Um, I was about to type to Kyle in the chat, and then I did not, so I'll just say it out loud. I am trying to add still here at 894.50s, because I do want a little bit more oomph, want a little bit more room in this position. And we're going to be, let me check to switch to my one minute, because that's what I traded. Uh, oh, there we go. NVIDIA one minute. I don't like that we're having this weird pop off this 890.340, but we're going to be getting some out of 893s, and then we're going to be saving pieces for dreams, not not a huge dream, mind you, just the bottom of this previous range. Um, around this 890, is it 892.85? We'll do like 892, we'll do 892.95, exactly there. You know, NVIDIA, if you're gonna give me levels, I'll just respect them. Um, so yeah, you, NVIDIA, definitely not one you wanna uh, backhand or disrespect or talk down to. So happy with this trade right now. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, this Tesla, Tesla breaks down below VWAP. I'm gonna have to keep my eye on this, but yeah, sometimes levels just scream at you and I apparently ignored them. So uh, congrats though to anyone who got that Tesla 172.70. I don't know why, it's, you, you can't say for sure why stocks choose levels, but um, yeah, Tesla obsessed with that 172.70. Also, I just noticed, courtesy of our position board, shout out to the position board, that I am long meta. So um, please just punch with this. This is what I wanted. I'm gonna switch to the three nice. so you can kind of see the range on here. Yeah, really happy with this. We only got part filled, but we still have enough shares uh, for me to, you know, smile and get out of bed in the morning. So please just punch. <laughs> um, we're gonna be getting out of this just shy of that 517.20, the top of the range. There we go. Yeah, that's what I have right now. Short NVIDIA, it looks like Bang. we're out of NVIDIA. Out NVIDIA. You're out so, NVIDIA? Pretty happy, yeah. Fans, Ghoul's be coming on. Thank you, Day Trader oh, Cut for letting us know. He will be taking the mic soon. If we see any updates here coming into the Benzinga, I shall let you know. AMD, though, also continuing to rage, so I might have to let it know who's boss and take it short again. I'm joking. Yeah, I'm not thank you for reminding me about stock. The, um, the housekeeping that we have to do. Okay, here we go. So, Bostic is supposed to drop hot lines at 2.30. 14.30, so uh, Raphael Bostic, Fed member, obviously, coming on at 2.30, so keep, uh, keep tabs on that. That'll be on the Big Kahuna show. What else we have? We have Mary Daly, going to drop hot lines as well at um, 3.30. Again, that'll be later. That'll be on the, um, the closing show with Neil and Sean. So two Fed speakers today. Raphael Bostic, Mary Daly. What else do we have? No, that's it. That's the only Fed speakers. We have a lot of uh, oil stuff coming out, crude, um, as well as gold stuff coming out as well at 3.30. So, yeah, some commodity stuff, some Fed speakers. We'll see. Uh, there. Brad Gober, I'm long Apple, 176.04. All right, brother, you got a better price than me. It's doing the dance right now. It's trying to hold the 50-period moving average, but I don't, I'm not very pleased with it. But we're already profitable on it, so let's see if we can get that move back up. Somebody was asking earlier, can you look at crowd, CrowdStrike? One that we haven't looked at in some time, CRWD. Uh, let's have a look at the Benioff company. Oh, no, no, that's CRM. What am I talking about? I'm losing it. All right, here's CrowdStrike on the day. Let's go to a bit of a wider view. Yeah, crowd's not doing much today, guys. I mean... There's not a lot of crowd in crowd. No, there isn't. There's no crowd in crowd today. Crowd's, uh, well, it's down. Down on the day. What the hell is it down? Uh, let's find out. So CrowdStrike down 2.43, no headlines. Haven't seen any significant headline come in on CrowdStrike in some time. So I got to tell you, I mean, it's at the volume weighted average price right now, bouncing off 308 and two thirds, but there isn't, there's just not enough for me today to, to be trading CrowdStrike. I'm sorry about that. But when there is, I will absolutely gladly trade it. Uh, I hold Pan W in my long-term account. It is one of my long-term positions slash swing, really kind of changes from time to time exactly how I feel about that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I'm really worried about this 176 on Apple. We're a little bit above 176 and then we keep rejecting it. So this is not maybe a good look here. I have my stop in place. I've got the dip trade here uh, in place to get a better cost basis, but I think I'm just asking for too much there. So let's go ahead and put it in there. Uh, for a less shares. But yeah, Apple looking like it may not hold these levels. Not exactly sure. But that NVIDIA, I'm telling me you're still short NVIDIA. No, I'm not. But what a just, beautiful short this, that was. This is a really nice short, but yeah. I want to say to you the reason I'm not still short. Okay. Because 
I, I've learned, and this was my, this was my issue with this, this short earlier, is that although this was probably, this, I think this short it took was a lot sweeter, the second one, but if I overstay my welcome, and if I don't have like a plan out for something like this, I get a little bit squeamish and I just don't feel that, feel like I don't train my Fair. best. Like for this earlier short, if I had gotten out when we just had that move down, we would have been a dollar plus in the money. We ended up losing on the trade. So um, I just find that for myself, especially with stuff like Nvidia, I kind of had to adhere to that. Of course, you know, you're, you're making a little bit less profit, but I also find I lose less doing this. So um, I'm still proud of my entry, honestly, too. Like, you know, even if I didn't get all the profit, I still took about a dollar on this. So I'm pleased to sponge. Nice, that's and I think huge. That, that's what I've said too. Thank you, I appreciate that. I feel like sometimes I fight FOMO by just having my plans and you know, get, get getting out, right? So that, that's the thing here. But yeah, congrats to anybody still short. This this is gorgeous. And honestly, if we reject again off this 892 area, I'll get back in. I have no problem with that. I just have to, I have to respect my ranges, I think, because I think the ranges treat totally me better fine. when I treat them with respect. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You treat that range with respect. All right, uh, keeping an eye on some of these other trades. Nothing happening here. Still in this position, but I do believe the Neil is ready for his lesson of the day. Welcome to the lesson of the day brought to you by Real Trading, the only place where you can fulfill your day trading dreams um, with Real Trades in every single market uh, that you can absolutely imagine. And when you are trading, you probably hear this said a lot, especially on uh, the morning show, the live show, the afternoon show, the midday show, stay in your lane. And when you think about that term, now if you're driving, it's pretty obvious what that means, right? I mean, clearly, basically, you're either one of those people that likes the fast lane, you're passing people, you want to be just slightly above the pace of traffic, maybe you're conservative, you like to keep things slow, just chill out, or maybe you like the optionality in the middle uh, where you're on the highway, you like to be able to have exits and you're kind of in between. In trading, I think it's very similar. If you can't define the type of trader that you are, then you're in that beginning phase and you should be experimenting and you should be trying all different flavors of trading. But once you've established what's profitable for you, then you've got to make sure that that's where the capital is going. And just because you get excited about something doesn't mean you want to jump into it. Now, the most obvious distinction that we can make between styles would be, I'd say, fundamental and technical. So if you are a trader that likes technicals, and when I say technicals, you're looking at a chart, you were looking for chart patterns, you were looking for support and resistance, maybe you're using some indicators, it's really just about those patterns, and then you're using price action based off of those patterns for your trades. You don't care necessarily whether you beat on the top and bottom lines or what the CEO might have said. It might give you a catalyst, but that's about it. If you're fundamental, I think we all understand there, you're gonna be pouring over balance sheets, you're gonna be reading and listening to reports, you're gonna care what the CEO has to say during a conference call, and you're gonna make judgment calls. A lot of times when you're, you're a fundamental trader, you might be buying into weakness. And why does that matter? I'll show you the best example, and pretty much the reason why this is lesson of the day, is all the questions we kept getting about JPM. And all morning long in the morning show, everyone's like, why is JP, JP Morgan going down? And truth be told, I don't know, because it's, because it's going down, because buyers aren't there, because sellers are taking profit, because Jamie Dimon didn't say the right thing in the conference call, because one metric wasn't good enough. Now, if you're a fundamental investor in JP Morgan, you're gonna look at that, beat on the top and bottom lines, okay, what was their net interest income, all that kind of good stuff, and you're gonna make a judgment as to whether this is too far to the downside, and maybe you'll like some longs, off, like, uh, like some longs on these dips. If that's what you do, that's what you do, but you probably have a different time horizon. If you are a price action trader, then you don't care if they had a good report. Ultimately, what you care about is a trend to the downside. And then the, the ability to tune it all out when you do see that trend and ignore the fact that it's on a potentially positive catalyst. Like at some point you could maybe favor along if it looks strong because it was a positive uh, earnings report. But at the end of the day, if you are a technical trader, then you've got to be able to stay in that lane. And, and here's the problem, if you try to jump back and forth, what's gonna happen to you is you're just not gonna be consistent. 
And if you're not consistent with your strategies, then you're not gonna know in a true sense what does or doesn't work for you. Because you're gonna be blending things and you will have no definable results with which to gauge your success and then put capital to the things that are working. And that's a huge problem for traders. I mean, if you like breakouts, again, price action, then maybe that's not the same as dip buying, but at least you're doing things that speak the same language. If you find yourself in the middle of the day in a downward trend in a stock and you're a technical trader and you're talking yourself into a long as you are reading a balance sheet, then you should probably take a step back and question your life decisions. Now, the other thing we say in terms of sticking in your lane comes down to trading style as well. And now within momentum and technical trading, you can be a couple of different things. You might be a trend trader. You might also be a mean reversion trader. I think these are two very different things. And if you are good at one versus the other, then you need to know what skill sets are gonna be important to you. Now, I'll give you an example. If you're a trend trader, then when you see Coinbase, let's just say, wipe out bottom here, trend up, the next day, you will probably be favoring long trades. If this is what you do best, then when it does this, you wanna have long opportunities, you look for things like dip buys, you look for, look for higher lows, and when it keeps giving it to you, you wanna be taking those trades. Now it's easy to spot a trend as it's going and look for entries. Whether or not you get the dip buys or you time them right, of course that's gonna be the nuances that are not easy to trade. But if you're a mean reversion trader where you see a big move up and you're looking for the retracement, you simply might just have to spot those tops and sit out a stock that is going absolutely haywire until it goes right to your level. Now the 260 level on Coinbase has been a big deal. There's no question about it. And if you, and if you look at this thing on a daily chart, I'm gonna pull up my trade ideas up here. Since it has made these lower highs, it had been rejecting a low, these tops. You've made a lower high off the 260, which has been pretty significant resistance going into this week. So if your bread and butter is seeing parabolic moves that you think are too fast and too overextended and you wanna fade them, then a mean reversion trader or a pullback trader or a buy the dip trader, if that's your style, requires you to have much more patience, generally speaking, than that momentum trader. You're gonna do nothing. You're gonna sit there, you're gonna watch a stock go crazy, and then you're gonna wait, 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 and when it gets to your level, then you've got to be able to pounce. Like, think about somebody that has the patience to just sit there in the woods, waiting to see something in particular, or you, maybe you're a fisher, I like fishing. So you're out there, you're cool with just chilling, you got your brew, you might not catch anything, but you're relaxed, you're having fun, you know when there's a bite, you're ready to, you're ready to pounce, and you're gonna be happy with it. The difference in emotions for those two is very important. The difference in mentality for those two is very important. The momentum trader is looking aggressively for opportunities to grab that trend. They're probably gonna have more executions. If you are that mean reversion trader, you might just get that one shot at the trade. So find who it is that you are, the style of trade that suits you best, and then try to lean into it. And I'll give you another tidbit here because a lot of traders kind of fall into this problem. And I know when I started in my first few months, I fell into this. There's the trader that you, you think is more fun or the trade that you think is more fun or what you think you might end up being and then there's the actual thing you end up best at in trading. You don't really know until you start trading or get into your trading journey what style of trader you're gonna be. You can have an idea about it, you can want to be a mean reversion trader, you can want to be a scalp trader, you can want to be a trend trader, you can want to be a swing trader, but there's a good chance that certain patterns are just gonna speak to the way your brain works and you've gotta try them out and then whichever one it happens to be, be okay with doing that. Because ultimately, I've seen a lot of traders fail because they'll have some success, build a bit of a bankroll, doing something they didn't think is gonna be their best trade or the best style or the style they wanted to do and the second they make a bit of money, they throw that away to do something they think is more fun. And I get it, everyone wants to do things that are fun, but you know what? You're in this to try to find what works. So if you can find your lane, stick to it, expand within it, 
it's much better to find a lane and then branch out and find ideas adjacent to it than to do conflicting trades. So on the, on the longer time frame sense, it's obvious here, fundamentals versus momentum and obviously technical trading. And then within that, are you something like a mean revert? Do you like to chase patterns? Do you like breakout trades? You might even be somebody that likes news events. Maybe the only trade you make is around Fed days, is around oil numbers, uh, is around when Fed speakers, around bond auctions, and you take one shot a day or one shot a week. Those are all valid. And there's no such thing as a bad trading style. There are only profitable ones and unprofitable ones. That's your lesson of the day. Stay in your lane, eh, both on the highway, but also in trading. Shout out to the Neil. Thank you very much, Neil. Eloquent, informative, and awesome, as always. The Neil uh, dropping hot lines on the midday. Now, uh, I, while Neil was dropping hot lines, I got out of my Apple trade. I don't like it. I'm short NVDL. We're nicely in the money on this one. About 30 pennies in the money off this 40 break here. And NVDA is at 8, 8, 7, 50, the low now coming back into triple eights, looking to go into, into nine. We already wet our beak on some profits here, but the curl down on NVDA prompted me to take this NVDL trade. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But I gotta tell you, I was also very interested in that Amazon short. Now look where Amazon is, literally at day's low. Do we hold up here? Amazon has been absolutely a rocket. Uh, as of late, it hit all-time highs yesterday. So right now, uh, I'm thinking this 186 and a third is an interesting area here to go along AMZN. And I'll just give it to the low of day. The low of day is like 10 pennies uh, off where we are at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's see here if we can get a better cost basis. I'm long Amazon. I'm going to give it, you know, not that much. We'll see if it breaks out 186.23. That is technically the low of day. I'll send it to you, Adair, so I can put my stops. Yeah, Pitchbull pointing out the reason for this, which is Amazon range. And honestly, I really like that. Thank you, Pitchbull, for pointing this out. I just typed in decidedly not Amazon. I typed in A N Z B. Oh, no. So let's find Amazon. It's oh, tanking. oh, it's yeah, it's yeah, tanking. It's I'm gonna have to give this like two more pennies. Also, I want to address too. Um, this, I, I was in a meta log. That was not intentional. The first one was, and then I tried to get out part filled. I guess I accidentally added too much and then got long again, which is not the goal. So we basically, what we did was you punch out the second we noticed it. It's unfortunate. Things happen. Um, and in my case, fat fingers are more common than they should be. But that's okay. Um, mm. AMD getting close to my exit here. I should have taken everything out at 64s. It was like a penny away from my point. Uh, but if we bounce here, I'm basically taking these 55s, which is just kind of the area we wake down mm. to. If we bounce, I stay in. If we don't, I get out. Really simple. Um, yeah, yeah. This has not been my day. That when the market is trendy, usually is not my day. But as Neil says, you know, you have to figure out what kind of trader you are, which I really appreciate as yeah, well. Yeah, that was right? actually like, really good. Sharif, uh, Sharif and I were talking about that, and it's like you really don't know until you try. Much like a lot of things. This Amazon, oh Amazon, what are you doing? Oh, I'm looking at Tesla. I thought Tesla and Amazon are so similar looking. I thought I was looking at Te Amazon, but I was looking at Tesla which is also recovering here. Tesla, you're being interesting. Okay. <laughs> I like this. I want to see what we do. The one thing that scares me about going long here is that we had this wick up on the five and rejected at 171.90. 171.90 was that area that was support earlier. I want to watch what we do here. Worst case scenario, I take it long into 171.90. Um, AMD is becoming a bit of an AM disaster, so we're going to be getting out here. Bye, AMD. Um, see you never. No, I'm joking. Oh, why would that not let me leave? Okay. Man, AMD's down 4%. Good yeah. It's more than 4%. It is, yeah, it's very much down, which is why. Oh. I, you know, the long, the, it was holding up pretty well initially, that long, especially compared oh. to the rest of the market. Didn't end up staying holding up. So if we can get out of AMD, I'd be pleased as punch. And right now, I think we might punch into something on Tesla, but I need to wait for it to come into my areas. Man, we are tanking here, Adair. We're 40 pennies in the money on NVDL now as this thing comes down to 39.65. Uh, NVDA curling, sell the rounded tops, says the NOS boss. Uh, buy the rounded bottoms. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Big Kyle. Um, <laughs> 
So, uh, yeah, we're wa I'm watching as NVDL falls, guys. We're short 40 3 I thought I had 40 uh, We're on the way down here. Now, I don't know exactly where we hold up. Technically, LOD on NVDA is 88293, so essentially 893. That's still well away. That's about $4 from where we're trading at right now on NVDA. We're trading NVDL, the derivative. There are two others that I know about, maybe more that you know about, NVDS and NVDX. You could trade those if you don't want to spend $887 a share on NVDA. <laughs> Big Kyle, I see you, sir. Shout out to Tisha, Sharif, Adara. Can you go over Indo Move? It's probably over now, but it's still nice to see. Okay, so my headset just died again. I don't know what's going on with these headsets, but I think somebody's coming in at night and like bamboozling. Cursing them. it? Yeah, because every day. <laughs> Sean, Sean, it's Sean. What's going on, Katina Man? The Katina Man is the only one that works. I mean, like, that, that's kind of a little unfair around here. We need ones that work, too. Uh, no, no, I'm kidding, of course. Let's keep an eye on that. Let's look at um, INDO for Tisha. Bring in the side chart. See what's afoot on INDO. Indonesia Energy Corporation. $55 million market cap, right? We have this on the side chart. It's 98% of the good, right? On the day, let's put in the ticker. All right, topping tail candle into 594, $6 essentially. But the topping tail candle doesn't precipitate a huadunk. <clears throat> Look what happened after. You're getting another green candle there. So sometimes a little bamboozling these topping tail candles, you think that the matter is over with and we're gonna start tanking. Look, I wanted to get in on this Tisha. Initially, I said, look, it's not respecting VWAP because it broke it right here around 11.30 to 11.40, 11.25 to 11.40. It bounced off the 20, which is the yellow line on my chart. I said, maybe that's the better look here. Uh, wait for a dip into the 20. Alas, it hasn't come back down. Whether in the VWAP, Weather to the 20, it has been doing the dance here with the 10, which is the green solid line on my chart. And back above 550 it goes again. It looks like it wants to take six, Tisha. 105% of the good. Let me give you some details on this. 4.7 million uh, share float. That's very small. It's not minuscule, but it is small, relatively speaking. The way that I would look to get in on this Tisha is either a retracement into the green, which is the 10 EMA, or I'd look for a dip trade into a key area of previous resistance now support. So maybe that 520, that five as well, uh, owing to this level over here or this level over here, depending on whether you wanna use the closing prints or the wicks, but it looks like it is up and to the right, even when it did retrace, it didn't retrace all that much. Uh, so we'll keep eyes on INDO. It's really the only good small cap gapper that's doing things at the moment. Let me just make sure that I'm accurate in saying that. Um, INDO, yes. HUSA, okay, it's back above VWAP. So HUSA is back above the volume weighted average price, 47, 48% of the good. It's not giving you much in the way of a notional move though, because, well, it's trading at like 10 pennies here, 10 pennies there. I mean, like, the opening prints 160, the HOD is 254. So the, 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 the entire move on the day has been a buck. But again, you, you know, you could volume, you could share size larger into this. So HUSA, INDO, the only small cap gappers that I'm watching. Tisha, I gotta tell you, I'm not gonna chase Indo up here. It have to dip trade into a key level of support before I wanna weasel my way into this. I hope you absolutely print on it though. Let me know how you're doing with that. Yeah, thank you for Drake Trader Cut keeping us updated here. Fed's Ghouls be saying if PCE is reinflating, the Fed will stabilize prices. So that's that's good to know. It's not good Ooh. for the market, but it's certainly a good thing to keep in mind here. Also, I did get back NVIDIA. Uh -oh. um, I'm happy so far, like honestly, it. I have to say. You are NVIDIA, and neither of us are taking NVDLs here. Well, to be say. honest with you, I like your entry and I like my hold because we're both at key areas. Yeah. That's a good point. We're yeah. both at, let me look at the NVDL because I haven't looked at that chart in, in a couple moons. So let's see how this is going. Yeah, this is it. This is a great, you have a really good entry too. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yeah. A little previous, well, yeah. Short I like 4003, that. yeah. 4003, yeah, nice.
Um, but yeah, so right now, I don't like for myself just the way I trade. I'm trying, getting a little nervous at that pop back to 887, but breathe, Ladera, breathe. If we get into 888.50s again, I have another ad because I'm trying to get a little bit more ambitious because trading is about taking risks and, Bang. Um, you know, trying to be a little bit um, riskier and friskier. No, I'm joking. I'm just uh. trying to get more comfortable in the <laughs> trades. So I'm happy right now. We're staying below that 90 MA, so go down, NVDA oh. and NVDA. Yeah, you say, I, I was trying to do the down. There, we said it at that time. But yeah, so still gonna <laughs> be interested in adding an 888.50s. If we break up above into 890s, I'm done. So let's see what happens here. Um, I trade in video, like I said, off the one minute just because I like those scalps better for myself. So I have better points of entry. But the five, I, I'm still okay with this. We're below the 90 MA and the five, and I would say decisively below the 90 MA and the five. So I'm happy. But someone in the chat said something else that I've been kind of considering, which was Tesla Long, and that is John Danaher. And I have to say, John Danaher, I don't, I, I like this. I mentioned earlier the fact that Tesla had a suited double bottom is a nice look for me, but the area I will absolutely be watching, and just for myself, not advice, is that 171.90. That was the previous support area. If we resist, I insist. I get involved in this short. Um, and it looks like we are having a bit of trouble now with this area. For your sake, John, I do hope this one comes back to the upside. And honestly, like I said, if we push above that 190, I would also probably hop into the Cybertruck right with you. Because I think that's a nice look to the upside. Uh, you're out of NVDL. Yeah, I'm trying to focus on Apple, man, because Apple keeps bouncing off that 50 period. I mean, it's back right back down again into that area. It keeps, for whatever reason, hovering between 176 and 175, 8-ish, 80-ish, uh, or thereabouts. Where are we long? We're along 85. So I'll give us a little bit of room, a bit of a range trade happening here on AAPL. We'll see how long that lasts for. So I'll give this one, oh, wow. Just as I talk about it, it comes right back down there. So the market, oh, the market is inching a lot closer to 18.2. So, yeah, decisions to be made here for uh, futures traders who may be interested in that 100-point level. So we'll keep eyes on 18.2 as we're at 18.212. We're just a little bit lower actually at the moment. So we'll keep eyes on that one. What's NVDL doing? Yeah, it's still in that range or thereabouts, but I'm gonna have to cut this trade on AAPL. Not a good trade here. Uh, just as I get into the range, it breaks down on me, but that's just the way it is. Uh, I'll look to reinstitute a trade on AAPL either at the half dollar or a third of a dollar because those are the areas of support that we got into at around, what time was that? 11, 11.05 or so. That is uh, that little double bottom that we have over here. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. This one, these two over here. So if we're gonna make our way down into that area, I'll be looking to re-up at that area there for Apple. So we'll see what we get there. We had a nice trade on that one earlier. What else is moving here? Uh, TSLA also at lows. This is, could be interesting here. Tesla coming into that 174 and a half. Oh, sorry, 171 and a half, excuse me. Last time we were down here, we bounced off this level. Could we get a double bottom at around these levels for TSLA? Questions to be asked here, especially since we're, you know, kind of near the lows on the future. Technically, the low on the day on the June contract is 18,193. We're just a smidge above 18,2 at the moment. So let's pull up TSLA and see what is good with this one. Yeah, okay, that's an interesting area here on Tesla. Uh, we'll set up a dip trade at the 40s or so. We'll put 43, what's life without MZ? Um, we'll see if we get something there or we'll go without us. We'll have to wait and see there with Tesla. But uh, yeah, that's really all I'm looking at. INDO, again, in HUSA, the only other two small caps I'm looking at. Unless you guys know of another better small cap that's moving, I'm, I keep looking at my uh, scanner to see Anything is coming up new here, but everything seems to be the same old, same old that we've seen from today. I know people are talking about PXMD. You know, it's, it's below VWAP. I know it had a big move earlier, but it's just, it's not trading the way it's supposed to. So, gonna lay off PXMD? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, staying, staying um, a low dose of PXMD there, because Pax like <laughs> a, a bit of a weak pun there, but it's all okay. good. Um, also, NVIDIA took some out 887. Um, we're not gonna, I don't think we're gonna get filled for this reload, which short, I was trying to get here at um, that 888.50s, but it's it? all good. Um, I have a profit taker set for some of this position at 887.50s. If we get it, please just punch. And then I have a final piece for the dream, which I will be dispensing somewhere I have not decided okay. yet because we're trying to take more risks. 
Thanks. I like it. If we if we struggle with 887s, though, I'm just taking everything out of 887s. I'm really proud of this trade. And also, I have another semi, uh, semiconductor short as well to be friends with NVIDIA. And that's my AMD short. Right now, we are, this is, oh, it looks like we, no, oh, we got part out of NVIDIA. Okay, please just punch. AMD, I like this. I got involved here. I was trying to play this range to the upside off the, the, the bottom here of VWAP. And I was like, you know what, Adira, if the range switches, why don't you switch with the range? So instead of playing this range off the long side now, we're gonna try it to the short side. I got involved here when I saw this failure of that 164. We're trying to get out some of this at 163.66, which we might not get. So you know what, we're gonna take a third out here uh, because sometimes you have to calculate and adapt your plans. And then I have another, we're gonna get the, another third out. Let's stick with 66s, because why not? And then final pieces for dreams around 50s. So this is the deal here with AMD, trying to be scalpy. Um, I, I was gonna say trying to be pleased as punch, but I am pleased as punch because I think as you take risks, you you know, risk, with risk comes reward sometimes. And also, as long as you have like areas in mind, right? Why not try to, you know, have a little more, more fun with it? And shout out to Kyle Burdett as well, who was talking about this with me in the chat. Cause I was like, I got out of that initial NVIDIA short way too early and I was proud of it. But, but Kyle was like, the way you entered, you didn't even really have any risk, which was true. So I just kind of spooked myself out trying to get that range. So it's like, you know, sometimes, and I'm just coming up with this at the top of my head. So who knows if this is accurate. Sometimes I think maybe in attempts to be, um, to be fearful and be cautious, you actually end up being greedy because you want to protect your profit. And with that in mind, you stop yourself from great opportunities. I don't know if that made any sense. It did. No, I, I absolutely agree. Thank Great you. look there on, oh man, I got out of NVDL a little too early there, a little bit disappointed with myself. It comes right back down into that area. I'm trying to focus on TSLA here now because I see a little bit of support showing up here at that 171 and a half. We'll see what we get here. I put in a bit of a dip trade at 45s. It may not get filled. I'd like to get the lower end of the range rather than trying to chase this. So we'll see what we get for these bad boys. We're below 18.2 now, Big Kyle. You're probably happy at this point because we're, uh, we're at 18.2, a little bit above, a little bit below. How do we resolve? I looked over to the Katina man. I said, Sean, well, I didn't call him Sean. You know him bad. No, you what do you think? Do we break below 18.2 or do we hold 18.2? And he went, so you know what that means. So 18.2 break incoming, baby. 18.191 LOD at the moment on the NQ June contract. We're at 196. We are at lows, guys. Uh, one and a half, 1.57% now in the red uh, at the moment on the NQ June contract. So we'll continue to see what we get there. Interesting levels here on AAPL as well. We were talking about this 175 and a third uh, coming in. So let's have a look at that because that is the double bottom possibly here on AAPL owing to this little trough that we put in earlier. Do we hold up at these levels or is that just a level that don't even matter? So here we go, 175 breaking, 175 and a third breaking. Technically the closing print on AAPL yesterday, 170, just above 175. 175.05, 175.06, something like that. So. What's going on, Sean? The Katina man covered the cues at 59 and it's on the way down, breaking heavily here. 18183 new low of day on the NQ June contract. Things headed big down. And big Kyle is loving life, my man. Full bear froth over here. I'm spending the money for Kyle, man. Yeah, it's a, he's a Shout rabid bear. Kyle. Yeah, he's a rabid, he's a rabid bear. bear, right? Um, yeah, full. F I don't even want to visualize that. That's I the whole thing. That's fun. the whole thing. <laughs> What's going on over there? I, I see your please as punch. I'm so happy. Someone Thanks. was joking in the chat saying that you should take a shot every time I say please as punch. I don't think anyone wants that. Would be, well, if, uh, yeah, depending on the, uh, what game we're playing, depending on how many words you and I repeat, because we like to say our we have a couple isms phrases. all over. Yeah, I'm sure someone could probably make a game out of it. I don't know if they'd want to, but. Right? But yeah, um, I, I'm really, I am, as you were saying, please punch, with AMD. That is my one semiconductor short that I'm still in. We have a third of the position left, and we're trying to go for 163.50s. But I did exit my other semiconductor trade, and that is NVIDIA. Mm. And I'm just going to smile because I'm really happy with this. Nice. Um, thank you. I, I was trying to add a little bit, too. I think I was a bit too ambitious trying to add at 888.50s when we got back up there. So like I said, I stuck exactly to my plan here. I said we take some out at 887.50, and then we save a teeny tiny piece for dreams. I'm so proud of where I took this out. Like, 
right now it's, it's bottom wick on the five. So I have no idea if it'll stay there. But this was just for me watching, seeing where we had some struggles. We were struggling. 80-86-50. I said Adara, punch, and we punched. So there we go. And that is why I, I am currently pretty happy. Um, but yeah, right now I'm going to stay away from NVIDIA unless there's stuff I like with it. AMD, if you want to keep AM dropping, someone's going to keep their thumbs up and smiling. <laughs> But yeah, I, I'm still down in the day, but but I'm just really proud of just taking some risks and taking Good some opportunities. You, this you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Because this market is not my type of market. There are no ranges out in these hills. And the only way you're <laughs> gonna be home on the range is if you find these tiny range opportunities. And that's what I've been I trying to do. I think you made big BPI chuckle. Did you? I don't think I you've ever that. made BPI chuckle. I've never heard BPI chuckle back there. What? What are you trying to do, Ram Ram? Ram Ram's trying to cause beef between you and I. Did you see that? She's like, that's so mean. I'm like, no, BPI doesn't chuckle at our jokes. He's usually like stoic back there staring at Mara, right? You know, yeah. tell the people what's up, BPI. I like the stoic, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, so keeping an eye on that. I'm long Apple, trying to hold uh, this particular area, looking for a move back up. We'll see what happens. I've got a dip trade set up on Tesla at well at these levels, but I don't know if that is the right move because we, it looks like we're headed down uh, into these levels again yet, Adara. So I'm just going to have to put my stops. Yes, and we also had a super chat. Um, the Gazy Bear, 199 super chat. Um, yeah, Fugazi, uh, I don't, you know, Obi, shout out to Obi says that word a lot, but Fugazi Bear, 199 Super Chat, thank you very much saying, thank you, Adara. Gold puts just made my day. Oh, you don't have to thank me for that. Let's take a look at gold, though. I mean, I appreciate it. Always happy to have everybody here. Nice. But yeah, we just, I, we didn't even point out gold. A couple people in the chat pointed out GLD. So shout out to everybody here in this awesome community we have. Yes. But GLD, yeah, I mean, gold, gold puts... Yeah, I, congrats to you. I have no idea where you got in here, but honestly, like, this is an interesting, this is a bit bamboozling here. Look, we find support at that previous area of support here again at that 221.60, and gold's like, it basically, to me, is a bull trap. I hope I use that term correctly, because it makes you think we could be getting back up here. We chop and churn around that previous support area, and then we quadoop to the downside. The gazy bear, definitely also probably going to be a rabid bear for that through those gold puts, so congrats to you. Please just punch. Very happy to hear it. So, um... Yeah, let's see what else. Thank you guys for the support in the chat. I'm honestly just happy to be here every day. I am also being tempted by the Cybertruck on this dip trade potential, Sharif. Um, I like I know you mentioned it, and honestly, it just I'm, keeps consolidating around right? there. I'm not sure what but to make of it. But these wicks are a little exactly. stressful. And the one thing I will say too is, look, every time the wicks end wherever 90 MA ends. So to me, that's the one thing that's making me a bit cautious for a long. I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't know if we should go e long here. Uh, I'm a little bit conflicted, but. Just keeping eyes on it and seeing what happens. Oh, I'm long. I see. Oh, you're nice. Yeah, we'll see what we it. get here. I oh, like so yeah, Tesla along at 45s. We'll see what we get. Also, short softy at the same time. So we'll see what we get on the softy trade there. Um, Apple. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm out of Apple. Got out of that one. We'll see what we get here on both of these. So hard. Okay, so I already wet my beak there on some profits on softy. Good. Let's see what we get here with Tesla. What, what, we're long 45s. So the line in the sand for me is going to be the low of day. So it's going to be the break of 30. If it breaks 30, I'm Gonzino on, uh, on uh, TSLA. And here it comes. Here comes 30s. So Tesla looking like it might break that low. Tesla incoming, baby. You never know how this one is. It's stressless. So we're gonna we're gonna do uh, exactly what we said. We're gonna risk about 15 pennies on this one. We're long 45s. The break of 171.30 oh. is gonna be in the line of sand. But look at Softy, man. Oh my God, Softy on the way down. We're like 80 pennies on the money on yes. on Softy on this. So here we go, covering Softy there. Now let's go back into Tesla. Gotta cover. Te gotta take out Tesla here for breaks. 30, we're printing 35s or thereabouts. I don't think Tesla's the right trade here, to be quite honest with you. But yeah, yeah you, you win some, you lose some. We'll see what we get here, Dare. Hey, congrats to you on yeah. Microsoft. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, this is, whew, this is an awesome trade. Uh, Microsoft killing it. Also, shout out to anyone still short NVIDIA, because that short is still working. I did get out, but like I said, if I have a plan, I can't be too upset about how it went. So I'm just going to be pleased as punch for everybody. Who's nice. Uh, so that's what you got to be sometimes. Good vibes, you know Adara, too. We said good vibes, Katina, but it is good vibes, Adara, as well, right? So Thank quite you. frankly, your, your disposition is always, like, quite happy. So that's I think that's quite good, right? Good vibes, Adara, baby. I feel like this whole, like, this 
everybody is just good vibes around here, right? I feel like good vibes feed off each other. And so, again, I'm always, I always felt like I'm getting an Oscar, but I always like shout out <laughs> our community and our floor here because everybody has always been um, so pleasant and awesome. It's hard to find a way into a trade when there aren't really a lot of op range opportunities and one is a range trader. Even my good old reliable range today, AMD making lower lows. So it's like, what's a range trader to do in these markets? Um, hopefully something, because I do want to be trading here while I'm on the show. I just don't want to force myself into anything too hastily oh. either. You know what I will be watching out for? NVIDIA, I got out uh, with the rest of this position, 886.50. Let me switch to my one minute because I do trade NVIDIA off the one to show you what I mean. Look at this pseudo flat bottom break we had 886.50. If we come back to 886.50 and reject, I'm getting short again. This is what I mean, like this isn't a range, but it's playing off previous levels of resistance and support. So I have no problem being comfortable with it. Tesla's being stressful again. Yeah, bounce right back up, that's normal. I mean, you know, that's why we call it stressla. So to be expected there, but I also want to mention that Apple now is at yesterday's closing print. So I mean, I'm negative on Apple because of all the umpteen amount of ins and outs that I've had with Apple on the day, but this 175.07, 175.05, that is the, um, the print that we closed out yesterday at four o'clock, typically a level that I, I chart for both support and resistance. So let's keep an eye on AAPL here. Try not, tr I don't want to guess bottoms, man. But uh, that is a key area of, you know, you got to assume it's a key area of support. So yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I'm going to stay clear of Apple at the moment. I don't want to, I don't want to try to guess. It's going to have to prove to me that it's gonna bounce off that level. So we'll get it on the back end, as my friend Neil likes to say. Uh, what's Softy doing? Okay, so a little bit back up now into that 421 uh, and two thirds. <clears throat> Where is the, the right level here on Softy? Yeah, a lot of, uh, of fugues today, gotta tell you the truth. All right, what is everybody else up to here in the chat? What are you guys looking at? Shane says, free fall Fridays are back. Okay, okay. So definitely uh, you have a case to make today because it's one and three quarters in the negatore on uh, NQ June contract. What is the ES up to today? The ES is down uh, one and a half, 1.44, so outperforming the NQ by a little bit. You have the Dow also one and a fifth. The Russell, the worst of, no, not the second worst of the bunch, one and two thirds uh, in the negative. And here's something you don't see every day. Yields and equities are both negative. The 10 years down one and a half, the two years down one and two thirds, and even the 30 years down three quarters of a percentage point. Uh, yet the, uh, the indexes are all in the negative. That's, uh, that's interesting there. You don't see that typically every day. Taxi driver, holo, no way. Holo's doing things? Holo no as your girl? Holo's holo. Remember Holo? Yeah, oh, I remember, you remember Holo. Holo. I know you remember Holo. Holo was a bad I gotta tell you, taxi driver, 5%, uh, not gonna cut it for me on Holo. A two, a $3 name needs to do more than two and uh, a third million shares on the day. But it is trading above the volume weighted average price. So if you wanna take that dip trade off 290 on Holo, shout out to you. Scott H, UVXY, new highs. Let's bring that in. U, V, yeah, X, Y, which is the VIX futures. Um, so here we go. Good look coming into that 40 area. Shout out to you, Scott, because that's a key area of resistance. We topped out initially 39, is that 88? Yeah, 39.88 on U, V, X, Y. U, V, X, Y, I'm just putting the ticker for everybody. Yeah, let's zoom out a little bit here. Um, let's go to the hourly first. Why does it do that with some charts? So unusual. Okay, so it looks like we won't be able to show the hourly. I, I apologize. Maybe the histogram is the one that's causing all the beef. Let's take the histogram off and see if it shows up. Volume histogram, there we go. And yeah, oh, the split is screwing it up. I see, okay. Well, that's all right, so we'll just switch to the five. I gotta tell you, Scott, we're at highs, so unless we're gonna really get going here, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for an area of resistance at 40. So we'll see what UVXY does. Otherwise, possible dip trade maybe off that 39. I mean, I know that's a dollar lower than where we're trading right now. Just to me, I'm not gonna punch in willy-nilly at these highs. So yeah, a bit of a tougher look there, UVXY, but good. Thank you for pointing that out. That is a great looking uh, chart on the day. 18 and two thirds percent on the ProShares Ultra VIX 
huge short futures. So uh, yeah, that's a good look there. All right, let's flip into uh, some other stuff here. Let's see what um, the other make seven names are doing. Wowzers, NVIDIA on the way down. Here comes close to the low day. So the low day on NVDA, 88293. We're at eight, we're about to break 884 here. So beautiful retracement on NVIDIA. I'm really disappointed in myself for not having held that uh, NVDL short, but that's whatever. Um, I'm happy that I got out of that Tesla short though, of that Tesla long though, because Tesla on the way down just broke 171 on TSLA. It's Tesla. 170, yeah, sorry, I was just looking. Yeah, yeah, it is, go ahead. Okay, sorry, no, no, go ahead. I just didn't know what was happening. Yeah, Tesla still with the breakdown, says Diamond Realty in Miami. Shout out to you, my man. I always like when I see you in the chat. OG, one of the OGs there in the chat. Diamond Realty of Miami, baby. Scott H has been playing UVXY all day. Made a killing on it. VIX going to spike into the close. Bigly, shout out to you, my man. Big Kyle Burdett, NQ coming, 18150. Yep, 18151, my man, is the LOD on the NQ June contract right now. A bit 10 points off that at the moment. But yeah, great look for the shorts today on the short. Congratulations, Adara LePage, says Diamond Realty in Miami. So we'll spin it for Adara. Thank you. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, these, these markets are giving you opportunities. They're doing things. Yeah, they are doing things. <laughs> she likes to quote that one from me. But yeah, so I got back in this NVIDIA short. I wasn't trying to chase. I said, we're going to come back up here into 885s. I want all the smoke, or at least some of the smoke. The out's going to be if we get up into this 887, 88650 area, that will be the stop because I don't like that. We could be reversing on NVIDIA. I don't like this big green hammer candle on the one. Let's see what, how we're doing on the five with NVIDIA. It might have been a little bit too hasty. This could be a double bottom. So this might actually be a problem. Uh, but it hasn't been one yet, so I'm going to not panic, and I'm going to stay in the trade. We're going to be taking some out around 884s, and then save pieces for dreams. That's going to be the, the move here. So let's see what happens. Also, um, wow, congrats. Yeah, Kyle Burdett, are, are you, sounds like you're $10 in the money. Congrats to you. I, I definitely should have held on to this when I had this first short earlier, but I'm still happy I'm able to find ways to make profit uh, through these scalps. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be too upset at myself, but I am trying to learn, and that's why I got back into this when I saw the things that I was looking for. So we'll have to see if this comes to fruition. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I guess I should wait for the five to close. That's true, let me keep an eye on the five. Yeah, I think the one, and I'll see my points of entry, but yeah, I will be, I will be a little bit more patient, I think, hopefully, going forward. Also, uh, Brad Gober, I'm long Amazon, 185.50, prayers up, LOL. Let's take a look at AMZN. Oh, I like this. Okay, so here's the thing. As I see what you mean, we have had, we did have this kind of pop back up here, right? So well, let me switch to the five minute to get a better sense because the one minute's not always helpful. Okay, I, I totally like what you're looking at here because look at these little wicks down to the downside here. We wicked down into 185.40 and then we skirt back up. So you were like five pennies in the money right now. That's awesome. I would, I'm would. i going to be watching to see what Amazon does here in this 185.80 and then 186.20 area. 185.80 because that was previous support. And then 185.86.20 is a real, uh, to me, that would be a bit of a doozy of an area to watch out for because that becomes resistance, then it flips to support. So 185, um, yeah, what? sorry, 185.80 and then 186.20. Right now, though, please just punch for you. You are in the money, 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 about five pennies with that that long, and we are always happy for everybody over Who's here. Who's printing? Brad Gober in the chat with his Amazon long. Look at this uh, wick, like, look at this candle here. Amazon long, that's yeah. beauty. Wow, in the face of this huge declining market, I, you gotta love that. All right. <sighs> Let's um, look at some small cap gappers because we've been talking about, um, oh my God, do you know that we forgot to do the lesson? I just realized that. These markets were too crazy. Bro, oh I'm gosh. like completely not in my zone today. I totally yeah, forgot the lesson. <laughs> man, it, this isn't my call, Katina, man. It's kind of what I'm told to do around here. <laughs> All right, let's do, uh, let's do the lesson, baby. Sorry, we just this up. All right, optimizing range trading through volatility analysis. Sorry, one sec, my, my headpiece on. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this, guys, okay? 
the importance of volatility. So today, we're gonna delve into the world of volatility and explore how to use it to optimize your range trading strategy. By understanding how price fluctuates within a range, you can make more informed entry and exit decisions. So the importance of volatility can't be understated, but let's talk a little bit what it is in case you are a newer trader. Volatility measures the extent to which price fluctuates over time. So that's really what we're looking at there. That's your uh, Oxford Dictionary definition. In range trading though, volatility will determine the breathing room the price has within that defined range. So the more volatility there is, typically the wider the range you're gonna have to trade. Conversely, low volatility results in tighter trading ranges um, and with smaller potential gains, but obviously a little bit lower risk there. So that is how volatility factors in to the whole range trading idea, okay? More volatility, wider ranges, lower volatility, tighter ranges. Kind of simple, right? And obviously, you know, with the wider ranges comes increased potential for profits, but higher risk. With the tighter ranges comes sh smaller potential for for profits, but less risk. All right, and some tools that you can use to help analyze the volatility. So you can use something like average true range. We talked about that earlier in the week, ATR. So this indicator measures the average true range price movement over a chosen period. Typically that period will be 14 trading days, not calendar days, trading days. A rising ATR, suggests range expansion, while a falling ATR indicates potential range contraction. So what you're looking for there is, as the ATR gets up there and increases in value, you're gonna be noticing that the range is gonna be widening. Conversely, when the ATR comes down, you'll be noticing the range contract a little bit. There's also Bollinger Bands that you can use, and I have these on my side chart over here so I can just show them to you easily. So Bollinger Bands, all you really have is one band to the top, one band to the bottom, and essentially the top one acts as resistance, the bottom one acts as support, and so what you're looking for here is um, the range between the two. Now when things really start moving, you'll notice the range between the bottom band and the top band really open up. Case in point, let's look at that pre-market action on UVXY, shout out to Scott for bringing this one up. Look how rangy and tight the upper band and the lower band are there until around 8.30. That's when traders start sitting down their computer, people started punching in to the positions and the volatility started increasing. So what happened? The distance between the lower band of the Bollinger and the upper band started expanding and that's how you know when increased volatility is coming in. So you can use that as well. And you can use the historical volatility, analyze historical price charts to understand the typical range and volatility of assets you're trading. This can help you set realistic expectations for the potential profits within the range. And this is one thing that I've talked about in the past today too. You can look at historical volatility in, in different sense. You can look at the wider time frame and say to yourself, okay, what's the range on the half an hour chart? Okay, it's 10 bucks or you can do it on a per candle basis if you're intraday trading. And by that I mean, you'll often hear me say, the range per candle is two. Oh, I will absolutely stop teaching for this. I'm coming up there too, I'm gonna, I'm gonna narrate this. Oh, well, I'm telling you, when you do it, I'm narrating. <laughs> hey, hey, I like that. Oh my god. Get him, Neil, baby, there he is, there Jim. he is. <laughs> Love Neil. That's awesome. Um, we'll just finish the lesson real quick because I, I want to see this from Neil. <laughs> Let's go. So you, I, you, you always hear me talk about average range per candle, and that means you know you've got to take into consideration the volatility there. Obviously, the range per candle is a measure of volatility, and the whole point of judging that is to judge your profit target and where your stop needs to be. If there's a wide range per candle, putting a tight stop you know, kind of silly because you're typically gonna get stopped out in those situations. So that is what I mean by that. And here is a great little chart that Adair threw in there. We're gonna have to thank her again for always putting in the hard work and throwing in all that, uh, the, uh, the images here so that we can kind of put an image to the text. So here we go, tight, tight range, tight range, tight range, and then bang goes to what? Making some loud noise. And then you can see 
the distance between the upper and the lower band uh, really expands there. So how do you adapt your strategy to volatility? So with respect to high volatility days or periods, during periods of high volatility, consider using wider stop loss orders to account for the larger price swings within that range. What's happening over there? What, ha what just happened to the market tank? I'm not seeing Why are they yelling? I have the cues up on my side chart. Okay. Nothing's really. Maybe they're just like watching something. Anyway, um, you might also target slightly higher profits to compensate for the increased risk. So higher, higher volatility periods, you want to use wider stops to account for the larger price swings, but also look to take wider profit targets. Kind of helps you keep your risk to reward ratio in line. Uh, low volatility times though, in low volatility periods, tighten your stop loss orders to manage risk within a narrower range. You might also need to adjust your profit targets to reflect the smaller price movements. And also consider taking profits within a range of at previous support or resistance areas, just like we talked about on Monday. The first lesson we did um, with respect to range trading was to identify key areas of support and resistance and do that rinse and repeat strategy. So that's exactly what I mean here. And your techniques to uh, combining these indicators. So you can combine volatility indicators like ATR with other technical analysis tools for a more comprehensive picture. By way of example, you could use price action signals like pin bars and go back to the lesson on Tuesday to figure out what those are. Essentially, they're topping tail and bottoming tail candles appearing at key areas of support and resistance. You can use these pin bars near the range boundaries and combine it with ATR when ATR is rising, suggesting a potential breakout attempt with increased volatility. So by that, I mean, if you're at that 200 level on Apple, for example, we know, we all know that is a key level of resistance for Apple. And then you see ATR rising bigly, and then you get a pin bar that occurs at that 200 level, a key area of resistance. You may be looking at a breakout, especially if it's combined with a catalyst, likely, obviously, an AI catalyst um, coming later this year. We'll see. And here's a little bit of a bonus tip, guys. Consider using volatility filters to focus on trading opportunities within your preferred range, uh, range width based on your risk tolerance. So figure out which indicators work for you and try to combine them uh, for some profits using range trading strategies, Adara. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I we love range trading strategies over oh, here. Maybe. Um, I will always trade the ranges or talk about the ranges and always try to trade them better. Like right it. now though, we're trying to extricate ourselves from NVDA. She popped up above the 887 on a five minute with a bit of a viciousness. Oh. I am, I was patient here, I was proud of myself, but now it's like, girl, will you please let me leave? I would like to be out video now. Thank you very much. So hopefully one of these orders will go through. I've what? noticed, yeah, NVIDIA will sometimes like kidnap you. It has this big move up and then it just will not let you leave this trade. Right now that we're out, we did take a loss on this. We're down on the day um, on everything. Yeah, it looks like we're down on the day and everything, but that's okay. That's all good. I really um, didn't get that feeling because I thought I thought you had a lot of good trades. Oh, I thought I did too, yeah. but this last NVIDIA, I guess, this is why, this is, every time I don't really scalp, this happens. I think I need to be scalpier is the lesson here. Honestly, stick to your guns. Because I'm trying You're to really learn and scalping. like, yeah. I appreciate that, yeah. thank you. I'm trying to learn and try other strategies, but I do find it's like, if you're noticing a pattern, Maybe, you know what I mean? So I appreciate everybody's help and everybody's um, support. And I think I will probably have to go back to the drawing board, which for me is range scalping. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, especially as I go live, right? I want to make sure I'm profitable and I want to make sure I'm making smart decisions. I'm not down too much. Um, there's been worse days this week, but I'm just trying to like learn from everything. And I, learn, we're, we're up on learning, that's for sure. Good. We're up on learning? Wow, spend the money. Thank you. <laughs> All right, um, what else are you looking at, Adara? Because I haven't had an opportunity to even look at anything over here. I just finished the lesson, so I didn't get a chance to look at anything. Uh, INDO, let's see what this one's doing. Ooh, okay. So INDO came into that $5 area here, Ram Ram. You want to have a, Ram Ram. No, no, I told you, it's, it's busted. The only person whose headset is working is Adara and Sean. Neil's ready. Oh, now he wants a second. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> 
Man, all I know is that he made me wear a Josh Allen jersey on the morning rundown. And then that same day, I had to do the Sally Up Challenge. So, you know, I'm taking, I'm taking a lot of uh, pleasure in watching him do this, as I did when he ate pineapple. I know. That was great. I Those like that day, too, because I'm a pineapple pizza person. Are so you? I, oh, he Does Neil know that? I don't know if he does. This might be, I love pineapple with pasta too. I'm not even joking. You could add pineapple to pasta I'm good with, with white really sauce and it's really good. Are we good? Don't at me. Neil looks really traumatized. He's I really, really like upset pineapple. with what you just said. I really like pineapple. I'm going Ram Ram, but you just have to let me know to go. Okay, I'm going, bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> If I don't like the form, I'm gonna call you out. Absolutely gonna call you out. Yeah. Okay, are we gonna play the music? There we go. All right, there we go. That's some form, baby. He's keeping his back straight on the toes. I like it. Keep those elbows in, Neil, to engage the chest more than the shoulders and the tries. That's really good. Can you see him? I'm not blocking the, oh, I am, right? Stand here. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right, can we get a countdown? Is there a time that we can see so that the poor guy knows where he's at? There you go. Keep breathing, mouth breathing, Neil. Mouth breathing. You gotta get that oxygen in, baby. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that awesome? Keep holding it, Neil. Engage the core to balance out your, there you go, very good. Nice. All right, how those anterior deltoids feel, baby. Uh, don't talk, don't talk, <laughs> just keep focusing. You're doing really well, dude, really well. Come on, baby. You're looking real good here, Neil. This man puts in work. There you go. Big deep breaths, Neil. You gotta oxygenate the body, let's go. Nope. Getting gone. Damn you, it be belong. Bring Sally up. Come on. There you go. <laughs> Shout out for Neil, man. Shout out to Neil. It's hard to do this, baby. It's not easy. Good job, brother. I told you I'm following my face. <laughs> it's all good. If you're not following your face, you're not doing it right. You don't fall down. Yeah, you're not doing it right. I don't know how many. It's like the time. It was more about how long he lasted with this challenge. I don't know. A minute 32. Shout out to the Neil. It's hard work, man. It's hard work. He killed it. He yeah, killed it. Okay. The forum was on point. And he had a great coach with him as well. Coach Sharif. I tried to get him to breathe a little bit more. Okay. Am I good? Thank you for that. There we go. Now Neil getting the love, baby. Show my man Neil some love. Throw up ones, man. It is hard to do that. Throw up ones for my man Neil in the chat. I better see all the ones coming through. I'm throwing my own ones there. Let's go, baby. Throw them ones for the guy, man, in the, for the boy in the chat. I'm spamming ones. All right, what do you got? That was awesome. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, right now I was talking to you. Also, I got a little bit of ro slightly, lightly broiled, slightly roasted there for my pineapple and pasta comment. All I'm gonna say is don't knock it until you've tried it. Oh, I, I'm aware it's weird, but then I tried it and I really liked it. <laughs> so that I just wanted to I love myself it. a little bit. <laughs> but right now, Mahmood, I just responded to in the chat about this Tesla short. I'm getting short Tesla. I like this. So my reasoning for this. Yes. Look at this massive support area, double top or double bottom. I liked it as a long. If we had held it, we couldn't hold it. Um, so you know what? Now people, not people, I'm people. I am going short. So uh, I like that we're kind of rejecting that area around where we had the double bottom earlier. If we break above that 170, 160, I'm Audi. We're going to take some profit here. I need to go back to my range basics. We're getting out here I love it. at 170, Kill it, 60. kill it. That, I, lo I love the passion with which you express that. Like uh, that just shows that you're the real deal there. So keep, a, keep an eye here on INDO. This one came into five and the, uh, the volume weighted average price. This thing is a monster. So we're gonna see if we can get long a little bit here on INDO. What did I just do here? Did I not get filled there? What's, what's wrong? Uh, or is this not tradable on our system or what? Let me see here. I'm gonna try to quickly take a drip trade. No, okay. Oh my God. So 
Maybe I did something wrong there. Okay, we'll see. INDO bouncing here, but I don't like the fact that it got away from me a little bit. I'm gonna sit down in front of five for that five defend. If it comes back down, it's going to that quarter dollar here, so it looks like I did miss it. Uh, good look here on INDO as it bounces off that five in the volume weighted average price, as well as HUSA. It's kind of doing the same thing. Very similar charts on INDO and HUSA. They're kind of the, the better two small cap gappers, if I could say so. Both trading kind of at the volume weighted average price and both seem to dip right at that 11.30 time slot. They both sold off and then they both got bought up. Very, very similar looking charts here. And that's not something you see typically with small cap gappers. That's more something that, you know, for the Meg 7 or some of the big cappers that move in tandem as a result of the, uh, the connections to the futures. But that's not typical for small cap gappers. So keep an eye out on that. I do like, I do like this INDO area here, not just because it's $5, not because VWAP, but this area over here earlier at around five bucks. That was around 11 o'clock, right when we started the show. Rejected off five and then um, popped back in. Shout out to Tisha Perkins. I know she was trading INDO earlier to good effect. Tisha, if you're still there, let me know what your look is here on Indo and whether uh, you've been holding long or getting long now, Dara. What are you looking at? I mean, I'm in my Tesla. I am locked into the Cybertruck. I am buckled in and I'm ready for it. Moving to the downside. Down. We did have that little pop here into 45s. I had a resting sell order at 50s, did not get filled. That's okay. Uh, I am happy with the amount of shares I have and I'm ready for that Cybertruck to go down to the down. downside. Um, I, like I said, just getting out of the bottom here. I, I was proud of myself for trying some other stuff today, trying to hold positions a bit longer. It's just not my bag. And sometimes you have to understand if that's not your bag, you can go to the store and get a different bag. And right now we are returning our bag and repurchasing our short bag. That's the vibe. Yes, Tesla. Okay, okay, okay. Get me, get me in here. Um, if, like I said, if we break above this, this double bottom, the 60s area, Audi, um, and we might. I honestly don't know how long this trade will last, but I am involved for as long as it does last. And I'm pleased as punch. Um, also, thank you so much, Richardson, for the 249 euro super chat. It's just a one. So I guess he is down for Neil there, putting the ones up oh, in yeah. the chat. Thank oh, you yeah. so much for that. Showing the love, also, baby. Also, D. Westmeyer saying, great job, Neil, with a plethora of exclamation points. Mad respect for the form. So shout out to D. Westmeyer. Oh, I know his, he was his kind form of, was excellent. His, I was just, excellent. his form was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great for him. Yeah, because you were, you were great coaching him on there, too, making sure. Well, you could tell he has, like, obvious athletics background. He yeah. does track, obviously, for many years. We know that. If anybody who's okay. been watching the show knows that about Neil. So, yeah, shout out to him. Man, it's, it's not easy work, that's for sure. Yeah, I know that was all that. Yeah, that, that was awesome. I was like, the, the arms were perfect. I was looking at oh, that, yeah, like, elbows that tucked the, in, yeah. takes the pressure off the shoulders, engages the chest, right? So, that's the whole that's the whole look there. All right, Katina <laughs> is laughing. <laughs> Why are you laughing, bro? I'm just talking technique. Um, <laughs> I do want to know actually. Um, uh, Microsoft. Just came into that 420 area. Who remembers a 420 dip trade, range trade, let's call it that, on Softy that we were doing a couple of days ago? Well, here it is again. 420.74 just came in uh, to that level again, and that is where we based out earlier. So this candle over here took us down into 420.74, and this candle, which was the earlier one, 420.74. So literally off the exact same level, spaced one hour and, sorry, two hours and five minutes apart. No, that's not right. One hour and five minutes apart, excuse me. Uh, so this could be an interesting area here. I just don't want to take Microsoft long when the future is continuing to go down. But is it though? We're getting that bounce off 18,150. So questions, questions. Um, yeah, and look at this. Okay, so. Everything is kind of double bottoming here. Not everything. NVIDIA is double bottoming at 885. Um, Google is at that level again, 157.50. So we're at these key areas of resistance or support. Softy at that level and, and Meta as well. You're not seeing that so much on Apple, Amazon, and Tesla. But Google, Microsoft, Meta, and NVIDIA all at these kind of possible double bottom areas. Yeah, there's a lot happening. You know what I'm here. saying? I don't know here. So I'm, I'm thinking about what to do uh, at this level. Yeah, I'm not going to jump into softy willy-nilly. I'm going to need to see the, uh, the futures curling back up here. So 
Yeah, what, what do you, how's your Tesla trade going? Honestly, there? Tesla yeah. is being very respectful, showing me a lot of respect, which I have to I like you know, it. give it props for that because it doesn't often <laughs> do that. I said I want to see what we do with that 60 to 70s area. Tesla will not get into 60s. So that could mean when we break above it, it gets really dicey, nice. which I wouldn't love, but it could mean that we don't break above it and we stay low, which I would be down for because I am in a short. So uh, in a very right. roundabout way, I'm just going to go say go Tesla. Some Solo Cristo is saying rent is going up, which it is. If we reject this 23 area, I don't know, but we also have an upward channel. I'm probably going to take rent off my side chart. I don't think this is a rent that I want to pay. The price is too high. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. I mean, uh, nothing's changed since. Oh, I thought, uh, sorry, I thought yeah. you were. <laughs> no, it's all good. Uh, no, I'm. I'm watching. I see you, John. I see you. John's saying 420 again here on MSFT. Yes, absolutely. Keeping my eye on that 42057 now. The new low. So we did break that 1055 a.m. low that we made the trough there earlier. I'm talking about this area over here, softy. Uh, you know, back above 421. But I'm going to need to see a five minute candle to make a new high here. Um, otherwise, it's just too much of a risk for me. I'm also looking at this 175 defend on AAPL, but it's also still putting in lower highs and lower lows. There's really no decided trend change on any of these names, and that's a bit of an issue for me. Eric Lundbald, go long and few, future now. Um, all right. I like your confidence. Uh, Eric, so shout out to you, my man. Uh, what are we looking here on the future? So we're basing out. The thing is, Eric, though, what do you see here that looks awfully bullish? All I see is incrementally lower highs and lower lows. This is a downward channel on the future today, if I've ever seen one. Um, and so I'm not really just inclined to jump in to a futures long with this pattern in mind. I need to see something different. And I, I got to tell you the truth, too. Even if we pop up here, which looks like we are bouncing a little bit here on the future, nice looking hammer candle forming at the moment. Look at this area. This 18.2 is going to be an issue to break above, right? We troughed out at 18.2 earlier, and then we broke it uh, down. So if we come back into 18.2, I would expect resistance at 18.2. So another, uh, another interesting look on these names, Adair. Yeah, go to Tesla, it broke above 70s, then it broke down, back down below. So that's okay. Bamboozlement we, Central. Yeah, literally Bamboozlement yeah, Central. Yeah. And that's why, you know what? You just have to laugh sometimes. You do. That's Otherwise, what I say, you're going to throw slippers. Yeah, I don't want to throw <laughs> slippers. And we definitely don't want to hurt poor Trenda because she's, I guess, the most important thing around us. Will we we, we will... can throw Trenda. You're <laughs> saying <laughs> idea. I love Let's how she not just throw Trenda. Up. She gave me the meanest she, look she right now. She gave me yeah? kind of a death stare. I, mean, I got good. it too. But I was saying, please don't throw Trenda. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, pet trend of her support because she is the trend of ticker. And honestly, I'm sure she's very happy because there's so many trending tickers on this market. No way. NVIDIA, I was casually interested. What's happening? Oh, Endo boomed, apparently, says Tisha Ooh. Perkins. I put my dip trade here, Adara, at 505. We didn't oh, get the dip. Missed. Yeah, it looks like we defended that. We came down into 510, but not 505. And then, boom, goes the dynamite. Trisha Perkins says, up into the five mid 40s. Here comes the half dollar. On INDO, it's up a cool 97, 98% now. HOD just below that $6 area, 592 or five, no, sorry, 595, 594 thereabouts. So we're awfully close to the, the high of day, a lot closer than we are at low of day. And we held that key technical level of number one, the whole dollar. Number two, volume weighted average price. And number three, a key area of previous resistance. And you flip to support, that is that $5 area here owing to the price action that we had between 11 to 11.15 on INDO. In case you're just joining us, it's a $55 million market cap. The float on this is 4.7 million shares, and it doesn't have a headline that I can see today to discern why it's up 100%. Um, I'm looking previously yesterday, no headline from yesterday, no headline from the 10th, no headline from the 9th. So I don't know what the hell is going on with this name. Do you have anything on INDO? Um, I would, I thought it was, it's an energy related name because I looked okay. this up when I was on the big desk and I mm -hmm. think it could be um, a geopolitical related place. Okay, that makes more sense to me. That was yeah, my take on it on the big yeah. desk, but I, I don't know. I couldn't Indonesia find Indonesia Energy it. Corporation. Yeah, okay. so the energy thing made, because also Houston, uh, HUSA, that's another energy Oh, name. good call, so good call. I, yeah, I thought that those could be like small cap plays related to energy. That would be my take on that. But I don't have any stories on it, no. If anyone sees, definitely, um, definitely let what us know. Indomie? Right now though, I'm kind of no. interested um, in this in this meta. 
I also thought that's what it was. Yeah. Indo, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you oh. No, I didn't know that's what you guys meant, Endo. No, no, it, she wrote something different here, Indomie, what is this? Uh, instant noodles, oh. is that it, Ram Ram? Instant noodles, see guys? Yeah, I, I was not that out of touch, it's this. Over here, Ram Ram wrote, I love Indomie. Here it is. Is this something that you had in Saudi, Ram Ram? Cause I, <laughs> I've never seen it here. I'm just, just trolling so you, Ram Ram. <laughs> you're so suspicious. <laughs> Come on, if we don't troll Ram Ram, then what are we gonna do <laughs> around here? Willis Addison, $2 super chat. War, Will, Iran, Sharif, Indo, Husa, et cetera, oil. Yes, yes, I, I, did, I did realize that, thank you. Uh, we figured, you know, the, uh, the issues happening in the Middle East right now are gonna have an effect on oil. There's just no doubt about that. Just remember what happened in uh, March of 2022. And if you're old enough like me, remember the Gulf War, right? So, yeah. Uh, those were interesting energy prices as well. Katina Man, what are you looking at over there? The Katina Man is short Intel. Do, can we, uh, price of, hold on, let me guess, Katina Man, 36.25? Just started, okay. Katina Man just got short INTC, 36.05. Um, down four and a third percent, obviously, in case you're just joining us, Intel, AMD, uh, bad catalyst for them today. It looks as if the Chinese government wants to direct their uh, telecom companies to stop using Intel and AMD chips, and they have big exposure there. And so that's gonna affect their p and their, uh, their um, revenue, as obviously. So that's precipitated a bit of a down move, both down over 4% today on uh, the day there. Yeah, so it was, it's interesting too, I was reading apparently that, that um, so the story was published today, but apparently the thing that they put out saying, hey, um, <coughs> you know, we're, we're gonna be phasing these up by 2027. Apparently that notice was released in 2022. So this has oh. been ongoing for a while. Uh, that's what I read anyway, I read the whole Wall Street Journal report, but that was, what I thought that was fascinating is apparently this was actually released earlier. And now we're only just hearing about oh, it. Oh, okay. So, interesting. Also interesting is Meta. I'm very proud of myself for not getting swept up or lost in the sauce here and staying in this trade. I said, as long as we're kind of above this 514 and change area, we're gonna breathe. And we did, and we have. Damp. So, well, I, damn, because I'm a destroyer. Oh, yes. yeah, 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 you know what I, knew, I mean. I, I wasn't concentrating. I'm I know, wait, wait, I know yeah. when you say pamp, it's generally like good yeah. vibes. Yeah. Like I always interpret it as like never a personal thing. So good vibes, um, pamp or damp, what have you. Uh, and we say that to everybody as well here. Um, and yeah, like I want to get this 5-12-40. That's the goal. So that would be a $1 winner. And I would be pleased as punch. So I was a little bit nervous about this because on the three minute, this looks double bottomish. However, on the five minute, it is not, it's a kind of a lower lower low. So I like that, I'm okay with it. I am a little bit emboldened by the fact that we waked up to the area I wanted to leave and then came right back down. So I like this right now. We're gonna get our out ready. We are scalping, we are saving no pieces for dreams. Like I said, I'm trying to like be comfortable. I mean, I love dreams, don't get me wrong, but in trading, you kind of <laughs> have to have a few, very few of them. Unless it's based on previous areas of support and resistance. Congrats to anybody who killed that NVIDIA short, but that last one, it just, I was a little bit too, I, I wasn't really playing to my strength, is what I'm trying to say. And so I had more success in that name when I did play to what I'm more comfortable with, which is my scalping. So that's what I'm gonna try to do oh going forward. We're trying to do that with meta. It's 117, I guess we have to do the lesson one more time. I just did it. Do you wanna wait a little oh, bit? Oh yeah, let's yeah. wait. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't like, sure, because I like, forgot. We did it a little thought, bit like, late. half past, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. I'm, um, I'm looking here at Tesla uh, for a couple of reasons. It's putting in a couple of topping tail candles here through the 20, and it's been uh, it's been trying to break. Like you saw um, earlier, we did a dance with Tesla at this 170, 150 level uh, for a long, and it broke down below it. So now it's actually using 170, 150 as an area of resistance. These two topping tail candles here look awfully good. Let's uh, weasel our way into a short here on TSLA, see what we can get. And um, yeah, my out is gonna be the break of that two thirds of a dollar area, 171 and two thirds. Let's see if Air Tesla can maybe come down into 170, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> it is a bit of a, you know, obviously a downturn. What's going on there, Katina man? Get down, he says, get down. He's talking to Intel. Yes, sir. <laughs> There's a whole lot of noise today, and I don't know what Mark is doing over there, but 
There's a whole lot of noise coming from that side. Uh, yeah, let's see if Tesla can come down at least into that 171 area. Dude. Yeah, um, I wish you best of luck in your journey in the Cybertruck. I considered hopping <laughs> back in the Cybertruck, but I do not think Cybertruck and I have been in the same mood lately, so we're going to leave her be. Uh, that's okay. Right now, Meta is trickling to the downside, so I'm going to let it do its thing. I'm going to be calm. We're breathing. We're staying calm. Um, also, Microsoft, I know you were involved in, in Microsoft, and I honestly, if we reject this 90 MA one more time, I'm going short this. I like this. Oh, that's a good look. I'm actually just going to take this now because I can just take it down to the bottom of this range. Anything I can play range, I will. So <laughs> that's what we're doing. And then we're going to be, um, my stop is going to be basically a break above this 90 MA. I like this, all this consolidation. We're going to about 50 pennies then for 2170. Eh. But I don't think we're going to get filled in that because the whole market's going down, which is great for uh, Sharif and his Tesla. And I'm also really happy with my meta, but it means I can't get into Microsoft right now. That's okay. There will always be new opportunities. Um, AMD still being oddly respectful of ranges. If we kind of curl down here at this 9 EMA, this preview, you know, we're getting into AMD. I'm going to stop yakking and start punching into positions. That wasn't English. But here we are, meta. I'm so nice, happy. Adara. Thank you. I think nice. I did that in my life. <laughs> um, and right now we're short AMD as well, so AMD. all smiles on on this desk over here. As Obi might say, oh boy. Oh boy, where he is he? He's right there. Yeah, he's, he's right he's there. Chilling. We love him. Yeah, the obes, the one, the Kenobes. There comes 171 on TSLA. We cover, baby. Uh, nice move down there on TSLA. We went short 44s, covered at 171.05. Here we go again, 170.61. LOD, TSLA. It is lower highs, lower lows all day long on this. Now it's down over 2% uh, on the day. I mean, no, there was nothing Tesla specific Today, or was there? There was no Tesla specific headline. No, out. I saw last night apparently, this wasn't a huge headline, but I saw uh -huh. some robo taxi regulators said that Elon hasn't talked to them about his whole, we're um, starting an August 8th thing. So they oh, said really? they haven't heard anything. Okay. But I don't know. That was just CNBC. That was last night. I don't think that was a ma major market move. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to put it out there. The Katina man is yelling at the market to get down, baby. So yeah, we're gonna, you're gonna have to oblige your market. Well, Katina man, it is, the NQ is at low of day again, 18141. He knows all he knows all about it, baby. Meta low of day. Meta just printed another new low of day, 511 and a half. Softy, new low of day, 420 and a half. Google, again, low of day again, 157.28 low of day. The, the the dead one, aka Apple, not at low of day quite yet. Um, it's got to dip down into 174.20 to get to low of day. And softy, well, it's just pennies above low of, I mean, sorry, Amazon, excuse me, just pennies ab above low of day right now. So everything on the way down. Uh, NVIDIA is holding up a little bit better than some of these other names. It's still about $4 off the low of day at 182.93. It's printing 186 mid fifties or thereabouts. I wanted to take another Apple, one, a, another attempt at Apple, another bite out of the Apple as Adara likes to say, at this 175 area. And it looks like I missed my opportunity 175 is not just the, you know, the nice round number. It is the closing print from yesterday or thereabouts. 175.06, technically the, low, the closing print at four. And we got a perfunctory curl here. And it was kind of a dead cat balance, if I could call it that. Rejecting off the 50 and right back down we go. Not giving up the ghost is Apple, though, at that 175 area. Bit of a consolidation here, say, from 1230 till currently. So about an hour of sideways movement here at that 175 area here on Apple. But the trend is very clear. It is lower highs and lower lows despite the strength and the, and the positive catalyst yesterday for this name. This was well over 1% today. It is now almost flat, 0.08% in the green is AAPL. Uh, what else here? Oh, well, it looks like we covered Tesla too quickly because here it is again, 170.82 Katina Man, and it's on the way down even more. So, awesome. yeah, paper hands. Just call me paper hands. What's up? My chicken. I haven't had any chicken yet. Oh, hit it. Woo! Winner, winner, chicken I dinner. I love that animation. So Have you ever watched that movie where they go and they count cards in Las Vegas? What is it called? 21? Oh, 21, I right? That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like every time they hit blackjack, like, winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's where the. Oh, I haven't even seen that. Yeah, okay. it's like a casino thing, right? 
Yep. I need to, I need to watch that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I one of my favorite movies. Like I think you'll really like it. I think because like you may have an affinity for this because you like math and you have like that eidetic memory type thing where you have to remember all the cards. You have to be able to add plus one, minus one, or zero. So if it's a, a card above seven, I forget the exact same thing. A card above seven, you add one. If it's a card below something, you minus one. And if it's within a certain range, oh. <laughs> you give it zero. And so you want to see if the deck is hot or cold, right, so that you can know whether to bet big or not. It's, yeah, that's how you count I cards. like that. I would Pretty probably cool. really like that. You're right. Yeah. Also, I don't really like NVIDIA falling a little bit here. I was trying to play this, um, see what we bounced here. We were actually holding up decently, then we fell. So we're just going to be getting out of this um, post haste because I don't, I don't like what happened here. Uh, we fell below my area of interest. But yeah, I should, I should get into that because you're right. I mean, I like ranges and I love, I'm a, such a math nerd. I'm a huge math nerd. Um, we're out of NVIDIA, so now I am, um, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Yeah, like I, I was trying to play this range and we actually held up decently for a couple seconds. We were about 40 pennies in the money and then we just kept falling. So that's okay. You know what? You, you, have, to, you have to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Back, going back to cards there. So, um, I like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, thank you for telling me about that. 21 is the name it's of this really movie. It's a really good movie. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. watch this. Kevin Spacey's in it. Um, there's a couple of other individuals. I'm sure they, they're popular, but I just don't know their names. Well, I know Rain Man, too. There's like a lot of card-related yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's the watch. original card-counting one, right? That was, the, yeah, it was like, yeah. And that was a real story, though, wasn't it? I Maybe. I'm pretty I sure. So. Based on a real guy, right? Yeah, the story may be augmented for Hollywood purposes, but the, uh, the, the dude was real. That's a great way of putting it, augmented for Hollywood purposes. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No, I, I really, it's a good term. It's a good term. All right, we can... Uh... Oh, right, less than time. Yep. Yep, so I'm just letting AMD, AM go down, so... I can take over while uh, you deal with yeah, that. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, I, I'm good for now. I'm just going to let okay. her do her thing. Because um, she's actually pretty calm. So, but you know what, what's also calm and what's really fun is range trading, but not always because volatility comes into play. So today we're going to delve into the world of volatility one last time and explore how to use it to optimize your range trading strategy. And by understanding how price fluctuates within a range, you can actually make more informed decisions, entry and exit decisions. So volatility basically measures the extent to which a price will fluctuate over time. And in range trading specifically, That's volatility good. will determine the breathing room of a price within the defined range. So how much is it moving? Is it like making these crazy moves? Is it taking big breaths or is it taking little gaps for air? That will help be, um, you can kind of help determine that using volatility. High volatility basically will translate to a wider range. That gives you more profit potential, but it also gives you greater risk. Now, low volatility on the other hand is gonna result in tighter ranges with smaller potential gains, but lower risk. So there are ways to definitely profit and benefit from both. You just have to be very cognizant of what type of market you're dealing with. So how do you analyze volatility? Average true range or ATR is a huge one. This indicator will basically measure the average true range of a movement over a chosen period. So a rising ATR suggests range expansion, but a falling ATR will indicate potential range contraction. You also have Bollinger Bands. These will widen and contract based on volatility, and wider bands suggest higher volatility and a wider potential range, or narrower bands will suggest lower volatility and a tighter range. We also have historical volatility. So look at historical price charts and see what they're doing. That can help you understand the typical range and volatility of the asset you're trading so you can set more realistic expectations for potential profits within the range. And that's why I love range trading is because it has those little profit areas just built in. They're little cushions, little trampolines, little areas that you can use for your profit. And that's why I do find range trading to be really fun, at least for myself. So here's one example I put in here. And I love the little labels here. Shh, be quiet, making some loud noise. So this is volatility with the um, the Bollinger Bands. You can see here, this is going to be a lower volatility range, just la di da di da chopping and turning, having a great time. Then we make this big move up, and the bands get wider. So this shows you wider Bollinger Bands could be a little bit less of a range, more volatility, and these tighter ones are low volatility and a bit more of a defined range. So what are some strategies you can use uh, adapting your strategies for volatility? Well, in high volatility, you might want to consider using wider stop loss orders to account for larger price movements and larger price swings within the range. And you might also want to target slightly higher profits to compensate for your increased, increased risk, which is kind of what I was trying and mostly failing to do with NVIDIA earlier today. We also have low volatility though, right? What do you do in these cases? Well, in low volatility periods, what you might want to do is tighten your stop loss orders to manage risk within the narrower range. You might also want to adjust your profit targets to reflect the smaller potential price movements and consider taking profits within the range of previous support or resistance areas to make the most of the low volatility ranges and maximize your potential profits. 
on the journaling which left over from yesterday. Technique also to combine indicators can be really key. So you might want to combine your volatility indicators with ATR or other, or like ATR, with other technical analysis tools for a more comprehensive picture. So that's just having a sketch. You could have a full color Van Gogh painting by just painting in these other areas and using other indicators to shade in the areas that might be blurrier. Uh, one example might be using price action signals like pin bars, which we talked about in a previous lesson, okay. near the range boundaries when the ATR is rising to suggest potential breakout attempts with increased volatility. However, keep in mind and remember that volatility is dynamic. So you want to constantly monitor these indicators and adjust your strategy accordingly. You might also want to use volatility filters to focus on trading opportunities within your preferred range based on your risk tolerance. There we go, that's the range lesson. Way to wrap up range week. I love this week, I love range trading. So it's been fun. I've learned a lot as well. I had some tips right. I want to take into our next week. I can't believe we only have half an hour left today. What I you? know, and the week in general too. So it's been an interesting week, obviously. There's been a lot of catalyst uh, driven events. We had CPI, we had PPI, we had the news with Apple yesterday. Uh, multiple different uh, market moving uh, events possible uh, for the week for the weeks coming. So we'll, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Big Kyle Burdett, $2 super chat. So frothy, many red rockets falling from the sky. Absolutely. As I look at my side chart here on the Meg, seven names, uh, there is no uptrend. That's just the way it is. What, the Katina man is printing, looks over there. Yes, I did. I did. I asked him, do we break or hold 18-2? Uh, and he went like this. That's 80 handles because we print, we're printing 18124. Make of that what you will, baby. Mm. The one that I keep my eye on here, and I'm a little, uh, I'm a little, it's okay. So Softy is putting in these doji hammer looking candles at 420. And we know what Softy do, did with 420 last time. Here's, here's what I'm talking about. Let's go to the half an hour. This is what I'm talking about here with Softy. This is back on April 10th, so that's Wednesday, where we had all these bottoming tail candles into 420 and it ended up holding up. We're right there right now, 419.99, 420.03. So this level is, let's see if it's a rinse and repeat level. I mean, the market looks like it's intending on going down, but does Softy do its own thing 21 at these levels and a whole, try to hold up at 420. Did on Wednesday, does it do it again? Where is Softy on my uh, trading screens? Here we go. So right back into 419 again. I don't know why I have the sick compulsion to always want to look for a long when it's a short type of day. Meta just broke the low of day again. Amazon just broke the low of day again. And Tesla just put in a new low of day. And now AMD is almost that low of day again, breaking into 880. Sorry, not AMD. Yo, well, AMD, I, I meant NVIDIA though. Someone's in an AMD short, I love that. I meant NVIDIA. It, NVIDIA is almost that low of day again as it comes into that low 883. So everything on the way down except Apple. Yeah, I actually did have an NVIDIA short, but unfortunately because I fat figured into it, I got out a little bit early, but it was profitable. So no complaints there. The plan was, and I just typed it wrong, to get in 885.50s. We got in at 885s even, so I just basically got out um, at 884.50s. This is a profitable trade, but of course didn't manifest quite how I wanted it to. I would have been out by now anyway, because I would have been getting out at that 884.20 level. So actually, you know what? We basically got what we wanted in this trade. Why am I getting upset? There we go. As I've said before, sometimes fat fingers save lives. Obviously not ideal, but if they work out in your favor and it's still within the direction you wanted, sometimes you can't complain because it's not like I was trying to go long here. I was trying to go short. I just didn't type in my perfect entry price. Nice. There we go. Um, AMD is a little bit more bamboozling here. I did get some out here because look at this. This was an area of previous resistance. Initially, it was going to save everything for 162.40s, but then it was like, Adara, we're struggling with 162.80s, and we struggled with it earlier today, too. Look at that support. So I said, you know what, Adara takes them out here. I'm not going to take out everything here unless we keep struggling, but this is, they appreciate that. I'm, I'm really, really trying to get better at my top wick? Um, oh, it is. I added on top wick. I didn't even notice that. Because um, I, I just had the resting order and I didn't know where it would add, of course, right? So I was very happy, very proud of this. Um, and, and yeah, we're going to keep seeing what these markets give us. Tesla doing, doing something, as I sometimes say, and as Sharif often says I say, doing things. So Tesla, if you reject law again at this 171, I'm going short. If we keep holding support here at this pseudo double 
bottom, I'm going long. However, however, Tesla continues to be the capital of bamboozlement nation because every time they're like this, I honestly don't mind the short entry. This wasn't a bad idea. We kind of had this this area that we had previous support coming in for resistance. And then I add here and I get out because we have this wick above. And then Tesla's like, oh, sorry, did I say I was going long? I actually meant I was see it, short I see again. I got eyes. So a little bit um, bamboozling, but that's okay. That's what these markets are for, to bamboozle you. And the type of trader you are is how you deal with it. The, the good times Katina wants to come on and drop hot lines on the mic. He's setting up right now. He's going to likely talk about his Intel trade will be talking about the Intel short that he took off 36 bucks. I'm assuming, and the number one trade idea of the day vis-a-vis -vis the sticky note? Is it vis-a-vis -vis the sticky note? Okay. Gonna, I'm gonna need to do a screen share here. All right, uh, yeah, good enough, all right. Look, this is the whole thing about what we do here, right? We talk about this over and over again and we didn't even make money here on Intel, okay? okay? But the idea behind everything and what you're trying to trade is your plan, okay? I was hopefully as confident as I possibly could be telling everybody what the number one trade was for the day today, Intel. I'll even show you, we'll talk about this when we come back on, 25 minutes. I'll talk about what happened to Alibaba, Microsoft, all the trades that we had today, okay? Today, because following the plan, is another one of those. Intel right here, we didn't even really, once the market was going down, first of all, we had the TQQ short, shout out to Kyle Burdett, shout out to everybody, we did get out too early, we had that short. PL number one on the day is actually gonna be Apple, but right behind it right now is Intel. And the reason why is because when we weren't sure of what we wanted to do, we just went over and trusted the damn work that we've done before, okay? So having confidence, trusting your ability, and having the balls to take a shot, that's, that's what trading's all about, all right? Or you waste your time, you sit there, and you just burn your tracks, and then the next thing you know, you're gonna look back and say, I didn't make any money over the last two, three, four years, okay? So definitely make sure you look at this, study your own stuff, and um, that's it. So I just wanted to say that like, even though the market is heading to the south side, and Intel wasn't super aggressive really early and we wound up losing. Wait, pick your poison. It broke through 36, that was the start. Then the, then the reload was the 50 period. And again, we talk about it all the time, but just keep doing what you're doing and everything will be aight. Go back over there to learn to trade. Shout out to Sticky Note Nation, baby. Shout out to Sean, thank you very much for dropping hotlines midday giving us an update on your trades. I know we're often asked, what is Sean trading? What is Neil trading? I'm gonna take this opportunity to let you know that we have another channel that you can actually see their positions. You're not gonna be able to get color like you did right now from Sean, obviously, but you'll be able to see Neil's positions on the left and the plethora of shorts he has there on, uh, it looks like a lot of EVs on there. Well, yeah, two I, EVs there. You mentioned a lot of EVs earlier today too, so mm -hmm. it looks like Neil's just taking the EVs to the downside. Yeah, and the Katina man sticking true to his guns, taking the number one trade idea off the sticky note, short INTC. You'll be able to see there all their ins and their outs. The left side of the screen, the extreme left, Neil's last trade, Sean's last trade's on the extreme right, and the plethora of other information that we have there at the bottom. All right, we just wet our beak there into the mid 30s as, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, as Softy curled back up off that 420 into 42030, we'll look to see if Softy can at least make it up maybe into that 10 period EMA, which is 42070. So taking some profits there on the Softy. Uh, but it is still a very tentative trade. This 420 could give way any time because we are at lows. No question about it on the future. How goes your trade on AMD? Oh, now on Tesla. You got into the Cybertruck, I like I it. did get into the Cybertruck, and initially got part filled. The one thing I remember you told me mm. that I've noticed is very true, sometimes when you get part filled, it means a lot of people want a price, so it could be a good price. That happened here, and I have to say, I'm really happy with where I got in here. Nice. I chose this, thank you, appreciate it. I chose that bit just based on kind of levels I was noticing we were struggling with. Then, around this 91, I do have the opportunity to add to this position, and by that I mean I have a rip sell. Instead of dip buy, I like saying rip sell sometimes, so there we go. <laughs> um, AMD, I didn't even realize my entry was, was that on AMD. I'm so proud. 
Um, we did get part of this out. We do still have a third. I got out another third a little bit earlier here because we were struggling at 70s. But if we get down to 50s, I will be out of the trade. I said that look with a really weird look, but I'm just really happy with this position. So there we go. Let's keep going, AMD. Keep going to the downside. I will be pleased as punch. Trader Life asking what my out is on Tesla. This is rangy, so it's going to be around these 30s. It's going to be around 37. Um, what's my size on this? Who is this Fed Schmidt? That, I've heard of Fed Schmidt, Who's but I feel this? like Fed Schmidt's like Fed Kugler and that they don't talk that much. And then we'll, every time we do, we're always like, who are they? Well, they're dropping hot lines Wait, as we they speak. They are dropping hot lines, yeah. Here, here are some of the hot lines they're dropping, Adara. So Fed Schmidt says current stance of U.S. monetary policy is appropriate. Urges, urges patience on interest rates until clear inflation ebbing to 2%. Economic resilience creating monetary policy uncertainty. Inflation levels are still too high. Job sector strong, economy growing above trend, bank reserves abundant, Fed balance sheet cuts not causing strain. That's a whole lot of point form there, God. Uh, but yeah, good look there. Okay, so nicely into softy here. Okay, here comes the half dollar on our friend Microsoft. Let's see if we can get a move at least, in the, at least into the 70s. The reason I'm targeting 70s is as it's been one rejection after another off the 10 period EMA on the five, and that's where the 10 period is showing itself right now, 42070 on S MSFT. Let's see if we can get a nice move up on the softy off this key 420 level. And we rinsed and repeated on Wednesday, and again, it comes into play today. I don't know why, and I don't care why. As long as it is an executable, profitable trade, we'll, uh, we'll keep taking it over and over until it stops working. So uh, that's the way that looks there. I'm looking to see if anybody else is dropping hot lines midday. No. So we know we're expecting Raphael Bostic, and we're also expecting Mary Daly. I didn't have any news of this Schmidt person here that was going to make, a, a, I guess, an unscheduled hot line drop midday. Hot so, line Hot line. <laughs> Um, AAPL also curling up a little bit here through that 50 penny level, 175.50 here on, on the formerly the dead one, Apple, holding that 175 level, which is yesterday's closing print. Good luck here for Apple. Let's see if it can make its way a little bit higher there. Whew, yeah, I'm in this. Um, I'm really proud of myself for not getting out of AMD when we got back up into 90s instead of Dara. We're still below the 90 MA. Breathe. And I breathed. And it worked, so I was pretty pleased. Also, in this Tesla short, shout out to Trader Life, who's in this as well, saying, I'm going for 169.40 out, ride with me. I think I will politely decline the trip. I, you know, I'm happy in my Cybertruck, and the reason for that is I've noticed when I try to trade outside of my style, like I was doing with this NVIDIA, holding on a little bit longer, it's just, it's not for me, and I don't trade my best. But I do appreciate the invitation to join your Cybertruck. I think I will, I think my Cybertruck and I are going to be continuing on this little ride down here to 170.40. Also, the Cybertruck analogy got kind of weird halfway through there, so it's all good. Um, I'm watching what we do at 170.120s here, so kind of getting into that area that I no longer want to be in. Let's be cautious. But I'm happy with this trade so far, and I'm happy that I've been staying a little bit calmer. But AMD is really testing my patience over here at this. She's very bamboozling. I think we might have to switch this. We're going to have to get, 50s aren't feasible. We're going to have to switch to 60s on this one. We're going to do, yeah, we're switching. We're going to get out at 60s here, but it looks like we might even break below. If we break above 163, I'm just getting out and taking profit where I can. Tesla, though, massive push up. So I'm going to have to hop out of my cyber truck and porn style to the downside. This did not work out, but that's all good. Not everything does, and you learn, and you live. And I think that's a great thing, too, about being able to trade in front of people is you have to really practice, like, just emotional control. Yes, oh, smile. no question. Get up, it. market knocks you down, you just get up and smile, and you keep shouting out everybody. It's a good, it's a good time. Hello? And throw slippers. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> there goes Softy. Here comes 421 on Softy. It's breaking through now the, the 10 period moving average. That was 70 on my, there, here comes 421. I think it actually broke. Uh, on the wicking basis, obviously not closing. Yeah, got up to 18s there on softy. So 420 holds again. What's up? Thanks, man. I, I, I took it on Wednesday and I, I remembered it from that. And so, yeah, 420 on softy. Excellent move up again. Here comes 421. We're a two pennies off 421. Let's see if we can get a closing print above the 10. We haven't been able to get a closing print above the 10 since... 1210 today, that was not done on purpose. 1210. The Masters are on. BPI is watching the Masters. Shout out to BPI. 
Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay, yeah, Apple ripping as well. I see you guys in the chat. Uh, we just mentioned that as well. We talked about Apple holding that 175 level, uh, which is yesterday's closing print, Ram Ram. Uh, this is uh, the, the white line there. That is uh, the yesterday closing print. So despite the fact that we are still in that trend of lower highs and lower lows, um, yeah, let's see if we bounce off here. I don't think, you know, this trend line is putting put too much weight behind this. I'd like to see if we reject off the volume at average price on Apple. That's what I'll be looking for. 176.40 to 176.50 or thereabouts. Uh, you know, Apple is strong on the day, but the market is overall almost down 2%. Man, have you looked at the... Uh, the range that we've been in the last few days on the I futures. I saw that. I was like, Let me just show you this. Hold on. <gasps> Look at this. Down, up, down. It's literally zigzagging. This is big boy range here. We're talking 400, 500 points that's of range, so Adara. Yeah. I was kicking my feet under the desk. That's how much I like that range. Like, not even joking. <laughs> it's a beautiful range. It's very pretty. Yeah, imagine that swing. Taking 500 points on the future on a swing. Ooh, boy. Yeah. What are you looking at? Well, right now, I have to say, the Tesla, we did hop out of the Cybertruck and then accidentally, I didn't even realize I did this, added to the, got in long when I was trying to get out of the shorts. So we got out of that immediately the second I noticed. Probably lost like a couple cents there, but nothing major. So it was just like a case of we weren't waiting. I was like, we didn't want to be in this, you get out. There you go. AMD though, I am very proud of myself for. I said if we break above that 163, I'm getting out. And it did get out. We are profitable in AMD. I am so pleased. I am all smiles over here. So I'm really proud of what I did with that name. And we'll have to see if there's some more opportunities. Meta, I was trying to see if we were going to reject or yeah, reject here off that previous um, support around this 152, 150, 512. Wow, I just took these numbers and flipped them in my brain. Good times. 152, I did it again. 51250. I like, if we can keep rejecting this 512.50, someone needs more coffee, then I will be taking the short. I think that's a nice look. Also, someone in the, a couple people in the chat yesterday were joking about me getting sponsored by coffee or Red Bull. <laughs> coffee or Red Bull, people, if you're watching. <laughs> Throw some love my way, baby. But yeah, so um, I do, in all seriousness, although I could not say the numbers right for the life of me, I do like this meta rejection at 512.50. There, I said it. So we're actually, we're gonna get involved here. I know it looks a bit bullish. I know we had this topping tail candle, but we've generally had lower highs, lower lows. So in my opinion, I don't really have a reason to be scared of this. And I, I don't wanna be a scared trader because as Sean says, a scared trader is a deficient trader. And this isn't like the type of trade I'm not comfortable with. This is a range. So we're gonna get involved. There we go. Very nice. Breathes up, breaths, wow. I cannot speak. I'm it's gonna okay. pass it over to you. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, yeah, here we go. Yeah, on the futures again, m curling into that upside, but we are at that 20 period uh, EMA on uh, the NQ June contract. And the last time we were up here, we did reject. And I'm talking about this candle here at 115, <clears throat> but it looks like we're curling up aggressively past that. Again, I'm gonna have my eye on 18.2. We don't break 18.2, then it's a dead cap bounce. We have the, the, the trend lines here denoting the lower highs and the lower lows. The fact that it's been a downward channel all day, yeah, and we're, we're pumping up. There's no question about that. We defend that 18.125 area, kind of a random area to defend, but that's not really the point. Back into 18.2 we go. Let's see what we get here. Um, Softy back above 4.21 again, also coming in to the 20 period. See that? You know, there's, there's no change in any of these trends. They're all down and to the right. So if we've been taking longs on these, we've been taking them off key areas of uh, support because there's no trend to the upside today. So let's leave that. Let's look at the small cap gappers. What is Indo up to? Oh, okay. So Indo just dipped into five again and I missed it because I did cancel that order. Sucks to be me. Here it is, INDO, right back at that 519 level. I'm gonna put in another dip trade here for Endo at 505. Let's see if we can get filled. Cause that's my, my favorite number is 25, but I'm also born in the fifth month. So my second favorite number is five. So confluence. Yeah. And 25 you know, a has a five in superstitious. it. Superstitious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Why are not? you superstitious? Not really, eh? Okay. 
A little bit, a little, a little bit. bit? Okay. So there's like oh. a reason, I, I always talk about, I can't do small cap halts because of Axla. Fair. That's my biggest trading superstition. Okay. I think I do have a little bit of a problem with like the recency bias. So like if a thing happens, mm. it'll happen again. Okay. Type thing. Um, but yeah, I also, I have a lucky number. I like 11, which right. I just realized also might be correlated to my birthday because exactly. January 1st. Exactly, one, one, one. But, um, but yeah, so, but but also like if things work and they prove that they're they're showing up for you, then I think sometimes superstitions come from, I don't want to say a very real place, but they come from a place that makes sense for you. So I don't ever mock people's superstitions. Okay. Yeah, neither like, do I. We don't have to mock it. Right, yeah, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where I'm going with this. But I, <laughs> I guess sometimes, I think it depends on the thing. I yeah. have not had enough caffeine today, so <laughs> we're going to do more of that. You have all weekend to relax and chill. I massively oh. overslept, so. So we've got 11 minutes left on the show, so we can uh, tone down a little bit now, the aggression. Um, so we know that you're obviously a writer. We know that. We've established that before. Are you writing this weekend? Yeah, that's the plan. I have a couple projects I'm trying to work on. There's also like a TIFF networking event this weekend that oh. I might go to if I'm feeling awake okay. enough. So that that might be, we might go to that. We'll see. Very nice. Uh, thank you. But yeah, mostly the plan is to write um, and then maybe also sleep. But writing, I definitely want to get some writing done this weekend. Fair. That, that's cool. What about you? Um, Hold on, I'm oh, not done my questions. I, I have a line of questions. I didn't know you were done. <laughs> I'll let the lawyer. Wait, wait, but you, you entered a competition. Yes. That you were writing for, and there were certain rules that were prescribed. Oh, yeah. How did the competition go if you don't want to talk about it? Yeah, it went well, Okay. I think. Well, here's the thing. So I don't know how it went yet. I don't know if I'm in the next round. I'll find that out, I believe, okay. mid to late May. Awesome. My thing is, though, is I was very tired the week I did the competition, so I don't know if what I wrote was coherent. You know yeah, what I... Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be really honest. Okay. I was like, so I kept being like, oh, time to write, and then I would nap for, like, hours, and I would, like, wake up and be like, oh, no. <laughs> so it was, like, a little... Yeah, like, this is this is a hard I thing when it. you yeah, are yeah. a very sleepy person yeah. but it's all good you know I'm really proud that I did it anyway because this is the first time I've done this contest as well since working here where oh, cool. you know the hours are a bit different so I was really proud of myself for just doing it and we're gonna have to find out um, what happens next because whatever happens I, I wrote stuff that I'm pretty proud of very good cool yeah I just wanted appreciate to find out because we didn't follow that. up with you on that you know nice you. and people probably wondering as well uh, Elon says hi Sharif Adair today's goal is not to lose money 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 and to practice what we learned yesterday, practice gratitude and take profits. Elon, you sound like a very wise individual. Shout out to you. Um, yes, absolutely. And you know, I, this is something my old man drills into me all the time. Again, you guys know I've been working with my old man a lot more lately with the new project that we're doing and he's always trying to get me to realize, you know, that grass isn't always greener, you know, that uh, you gotta be happy for what you've been given um, by both life and, and everything else. All right, let's talk a little bit about this trade that I'm into at the moment, INDO. I've been watching this for a little bit here, Ram Ram, and there seems to be um, a hidden seller at that 520 area. Tish, if you're still there, let me know what you're seeing on this. But every time uh, for the past about 10 minutes or so, we come back into that five and one fifth and we seem to be met with a wall of sellers, despite the fact that there just isn't enough size on the book to justify rejecting off there. So we'll see exactly what we get at 520. I'm gonna be looking for that five hold. This is the area that I'm drawing my line in the sand on. If it breaks this trough right over here, uh, that's where I'm cutting it, uh, and we'll see what we get from there. But INDO, it's been very strong all day. 85% right now was well over triple digits at its high. Uh, whether or not it continues, we'll have to wait and see what the rest of the afternoon brings. But it is um, an energy-related play. And as a result of the, uh, you know, possible belligerencies there in the Middle East, uh, oil is running up. I'm expecting the drive home now. Um, not drive, I didn't actually drive today. Um, I'm expecting the ride home to see gas prices higher at the pump. And when I looked this morning, they were already higher. Really? Yeah, it was know. like 166, I think, and a half for some garbage like that. So you said your car, did you, am I wrong? Did you say your car has like a specific gas? Like, does your car use more gas? 90, well, yeah, it's a V8. Well, it's that's a monster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of gas in there. I don't, I need to look up a V, because I, I feel like I'm always trying to picture what this car is. No, it's um, F Pace. Oh, F Pace. Hey, Sharif, hey, hey, Chief, and Adara. <laughs> I'm just teasing, I know you meant Sharif. It was a nice week watching you trade and teach. Wish all the community a great weekend to see you next week. Shout out to my man, Richardson, 599 euro. Thank you very much, Richardson. Appreciate you there. And uh, hope you can join us next week because you know what we're talking about next week? Small 
cap trading all week. I hope the market uh, is conducive to small cap trading. We, we actually get good that, small yeah. caps, so we'll have to wait and see. Speaking of small caps, Sidera, look at this level on Indo 520, and it just keeps rejecting off that level. I haven't seen one print above this 520 in a while. I, Endo de de definitely seems to be a wall of sellers at this one five and one fifth of a dollar. Uh, we'll see if this one can hold the five dollar level and curl back up. Right now, struggling with that though. Hopefully, you uh, that that Indo works out, and then you got got a nice sweet. Hopefully, you want all the smoke, maybe an Indo. Oh, I like that. I like that. There you go. Um, do we have oh the weed God. animation? Anybody? There we go. I like yeah, it. I was, I was pretty happy with that. <laughs> Also, I feel like that sound from the old 60s Batman show is very apt, given the whole same bad time, same For bad sure. channel. Did you actually fun. watch that show? Oh, yeah. With uh, I grew Howard up on, West and stuff With like Adam that? West. Adam I actually West, met so, Adam yeah. West. I have his autograph from when I was like a kid. And then also Burt Ward playing Robin. Oh, and it, well, I don't have his autograph, though. And Yvette Craig was back. Yeah, I, I grew up on that because my dad was a huge fan. Yeah, and yeah, so he got like me. the box set. Love and it. so we would watch Love it at it. the cottage. So, yeah, that's a great no show. No way. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, cool. like that. I have Very nostalgia cool. for that show for whatever reason. I like reason. The, the guy who played Alfred, too. Oh, my gosh, he was great. That old British dude. And the way that they got into the Batcave, they had to, like, lift that statue or that whatever. That was amazing. Remember? And the, the re bright red so bat phone gross. that doesn't look suspicious at all. <laughs> yeah. <there's good> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's completely inconspicuous there. <laughs> uh, uh, guys, I just want to mention HUSA HUSA, the other small cap gapper du jour, just broke down below VWAP here. So it looks like it's given up the ghost. First time it's made its way down into the 50 period moving average on the day. However, it hasn't printed a newer low in, in the sense that it hasn't made a newer trough. The trough here earlier on uh, bases out at 207. That print came in at 1135. So if you're trading HUSA, careful here. The first time we've got a red, uh, a closing candle below the volume weighted average price since these two candles over here at 1135 and 1140. Uh, this one, not as strong as um, INDO, but it is related in the sense that it is an energy-related name. And so it seems like uh, a lot of energy-related small cap cappers doing things today as a result of the headline we brought to you earlier. Um, I, I don't know, Eric, to be honest with you, I haven't really looked. You know, I'm obviously doing the show here, so I haven't had an opportunity to see what's going on in Europe. But uh, yeah, keep your eye on that. Pretty Panda, uh, Richard, okay, well, I'm not at all. Uh, Tisha Perkins, Endo making low lows on the five and the 10 minute chart. But I am seeing the hold up at VWAP, uh, Tisha, and that's what I'm thinking here. So let me show you what I'm thinking, and then you let me know what your uh, analysis is, Ram Ram, if I can show the chart. Uh, <laughs> no. Is it gonna be if you were asking her for her analysis? No, well, yeah, Ray Burn wants to chime in. She's more than welcome to, obviously. Uh, but this is the area here, Tisha, that we obviously had an area of resistance at earlier, and we keep seeing uh, a bounce off this area. Now, your point is very well taken in the sense that we haven't made any newer highs since that 594 touch. That doesn't mean, though, that we don't get a hold off five and make a lower high maybe to 550, maybe to 560, and then eventually get that flat bottom break. At least ideally, that's what I'd like. So we'll continue to see there. Shout out to Tisha. What's my stop? My stop is the break of the, this trough over here. So that takes us into 496, 495 territory. I'll show you on the trading screen. Uh, here it is, right there. So here it comes. Here comes five bucks, so I might be in trouble here. Send it to you, Adair. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm just looking at this meta. Also, um, this was this is a bit of an older company. I saw this after the um, talking about gas prices. Darwin saying, wait until egg prices go up again too. So you're getting a little bit roasted there. Yes, I for know. For the eggs by Darwin. <laughs> right now though, meta, I am in the short still. The reason for this little green candle was, would it surprise anyone to say it's a fat finger? I find it this time of day, I was getting a little bit tired and then my trade entries get really sloppy, unfortunately. So maybe like I, I need some kind of like immediate, like instant caffeine at 1.30 or something, I don't know. Cause this is the time of day where I'm like these entries and exits are but so yeah I still like this short we're below I we have this lower high right this was the area I was kind of watching we didn't make a higher high on a closing basis on the five so I'm staying in this although the midday's over in three minutes so I will probably not be overstaying beyond then how is your what are your plans for the weekend though because I don't even know if you answered the question why am I still in this oh no I, flat no I'm not okay so oh. that's that's incorrect okay so I'm no longer in the Indo trade the uh, oh what, what's going cool? Oh, okay. Um, for the big cameras? Ah, the Chile Nightmare showing us the newly arrived equipment that just came in. Uh, shout out to him. Ah, what am I doing this weekend? 
Uh, what am I doing this weekend? I have nothing planned this weekend. Nothing yet. I'll That's probably call a couple of buddies. Chill, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll always be up at uh, the parents' house in Markham, probably swing by, uh, steal stuff from the pantry. You know how it is, right? Like, yeah, I know you say, And then you oh, come yeah. off. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, one time I took something I wasn't supposed to and ended up getting raised for it. I'm <laughs> out. So uh, INDO broke down. Tisha, you were right. The volume weighted average price gives way. Third time and not a charm on INDO. So we'll have to, uh, you know, take the punch in the face on that one. And that's just the way these small cap trades work. Let's have a look at quick look at the futures before we send it off to you. And you can send it off to Brendan. Looks like we wicked into again 18.2 and rejected 18.2. And right back down we go into 18.16. So it looks as if we are destined, at least for now, to remain below 18.2 on the future. That is after touching almost 18.5 yesterday. Uh, big move up, then a big move down. So next week, I guess, will be the decider. We'll see. Yeah, what a day. I cannot believe this week is over. It's funny, we do ranges, which I'm really passionate about, and then next week we're doing small caps, which is Shreve's Ooh. bag. So both, we both get best of both worlds there. Yes, ma'am. But, yeah, clearly I am not able to talk anymore. So great time that we are <laughs> going to pass it over. I'm still in my meta short, still kicking, but not for long. Nice. And we will see you again. I hope everybody has a great weekend. So grateful for the support. Hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, I will be trading live next week. So pass the test. Super excited to see what the future has in store. But for now, what the future has in store is the big kahunas. We'll see you same next, same bad time, same bad channel. Brendan's at the big desk. See you guys. Hey guys, y'all welcome in. Friday afternoon here as we get uh, into